Thousands. Temperature in the low 50s. Not much of a breeze. It's expected to get up into the mid 50s and it'll remain cloudy throughout the day. Jalen Barden back deep for Pitt. And BT Potter with a big leg will kick off for Clemson. 19 of his 24 kickoffs this season have gone for touchbacks and we're underway. Returnable for Barden from the five. He's in trouble, slips down, and lost the football, it seemed, at the 15 yard line. They got it back. So here comes Kenny Pickett emerging as a Heisman Trophy candidate. Making his 43rd career start today. What a season he's having. 21 touchdown passes, just one interception. A QBR of 88.4. Only C.J. Stroud and Cam Rising have been better. And he plays with an edge. As he says, it's the only way to play. Not only an excellent passer, but he'll put his head down and run. 18 career rushing touchdowns for the fifth year senior from Oakhurst, New Jersey. Hands it off to Taysir Mack. Wide receiver coming around from left to right. He got near the 20 yard line for a gain of four. He made a, a, a decision to come back for another year. Talked to a lot of people. Great move. He throws short to Jordan Addison. He's their leading receiver. And second in the country in touchdown catches with nine. Just a sophomore from Frederick, Maryland. And Kenny Pickett told us yesterday he asked a lot of people, was told at best he'd be a fourth round pick if he was in the most recent draft, but maybe even a sixth or seventh round pick. He said, I don't think of myself that way. Movement prior to the snap looked like Pittsburgh guilty of a false start. Seven. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Jeff Flanagan, the referee. And Kenny Pickett talked to Peyton Manning. He knows Peyton Manning from his appearances. Kenny's at the Manning Academy, their camp in the summer in Louisiana. And Peyton Manning said to him, well, how do you view yourself? And he said, I don't think of myself as a That's fourth, right. fifth, sixth round pick. So back he came, and what a great decision it has been for him personally and for this very talented Pittsburgh team. Pickett's in trouble and swung down. Back at the 15 by Trenton Simpson, the linebacker. Well, it's a six-man protection. They kept the back in, and initially, Kenny Pickett's going to have good time. Credit the Clemson pass coverage. It was zone coverage. It was not man-to-man, -man. and they're able to get to him. Simpson there, an extra linebacker on the rush, and Clemson gets the turnaround on third down. These two teams annually among the national leaders in sacks. Kirk Christodoulou, the putter, the Australian. And a fair catch made by Will Brown. An excellent field position. For DJ Uyunglele, the Clemson quarterback, who started last year at Notre Dame, threw for 439 yards, the most ever given up by the Irish to any quarterback. And with Trevor Lawrence now in the NFL, he very played Georgia yes. the opener. Yes. Coach Sweeney said he was in a funk, but he's had his two best games the last two weeks against Boston College and Syracuse. They open in the pistol. Kobe Pace was the running back. It goes out wide instead. And chopped down immediately was Bo Collins by Marquez Williams, one of the Pittsburgh corners. Clemson going with a little tempo here. No huddle. Take a look at some of the receivers missing from this Clemson offense today. Joseph Ngata out. Frank Ladson also out. But they get Will Shipley back at running back. There's a nice move down the sideline by Bo Collins. The true freshman from Los Angeles out of John Bosco High School, where he was two years a teammate of DJ Uyunglele. Gain of 10 yards on the play. And a Clemson first down in pit territory at the 44-yard line. They line up with Braden Galloway in the game. And a false start. False start. Offense 
Well, see, those are the kind of penalties that are really going to hurt you because you're third and one, and now with the penalty, you're third and six. And that that penalty, as much as anything, is attributed to this pit crowd, a very raucous crowd. They got here early. They were outside the stadium, and that noise caused the false start. And Clemson had a similar problem like this on the road in their loss to North Carolina State. It was a mistake, and Bull Collins did not get the first down. Instead of third and one, it's bad to back to third down at six, three minutes in. Pittsburgh rush five. Uyango lay way too high over the head of Bo Collins with a safety, Eric Hallett, in coverage. Well, the offense has been shockingly bad. Dabo Sweeney's team averaging 20 and a half points per game, but if you take out the 49 against South Carolina State, not an FBS opponent, they're averaging fewer than 15 points per game against their FBS opponents. Yeah. It's it's been a struggle, and, and the biggest reason it's been a struggle is no big plays. It's too hard to play offense when you don't have big plays. Will Spires the punt and a good one. Fair catch made by Jalen Barden inside the 10. From the AT&T 5G Skycam. Don't forget to check out the AT&T 5G Skycast. Streaming live on ESPN 3 and on the ESPN app. Each team's had it once. Each team has punted. Kenny Pickett and Pitt from its own nine yard line. Play action pass. Pickett out of his own end zone. And too high intended for Lucas Krull, the tight end. Pittsburgh, the second highest scoring team in the country behind only Ohio State, and just barely behind. The Buckeyes average 48.5 per game, and Clemson giving up 12 and a half points per game. Only Georgia, the number one team in the country, is better in scoring defense. On the draw, Vincent Davis, the ball carrier. Todd, in our experience, usually when it's strength against strength, it's the other side that's of the right. ball that's that wins the game, the yep. Clemson offense or the Pitt defense. Yep. Exactly right. And right now, I would give that edge to the Pitt defense. I think they, even though they lost a lot of guys in the NFL, they've played a little more consistently than that Clemson offense has so far through the first six games of the year. We had a quick look at the coordinators on this side of the ball. Mark Whipple calling the plays for Pitt. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers. They need a lot of run after the catch. And Mel Key Stovall, a transfer from Hawaii, and he didn't get to the first down marker. Came up about five yards short. Jalen Phillips there for Clemson. Interesting, the first two third down plays of the game, Brent Venables, defensive coordinator, rather than going after Kenny Pickett with pressure, dropped into zone coverage, just a four-man rush. This is the best quarterback that they have faced. Now, Devin Leary from North Carolina State played well against them, but Kenny Pickett has played elite, and I'm curious how much they will try to pressure him or play coverage. Kirk Christodoulou punts again. Better kick this time. Fair catch made by Will Brown as he backpedaled near the 35 yard. Winning it in scoring. And they come into this one having scored 21 or fewer in four straight games for the first time since 1998. And that's a big reason why right there. Braden Galloway dropped the ball. When we spoke with Dabble and Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, they said either drop passes or inaccurate passes have been a big problem. Yeah, they've averaged between four and six drop passes a game. Galloway did not play last week. He got a concussion in the Boston College game. This is his first game back. Not able to make a catch on his first attempt. Second and ten. Panthers. We're showing blitz. Oh, Yungle takes off running. Nice cut. And a first down into Panther territory to the pit 48 yard line. A run of 15 for DJ Uyungle. He is a north and south runner, which means he, he doesn't beat you to the sideline, but he does have some shiftiness for a big guy and can make some people miss. That was just a good decision. He wanted to throw quick, thought the blitz was coming, pit faked it out, and he made it a good decision to run the ball. 
Here's Will Shipley, the talented true freshman out of North Carolina. Missed the last couple of games with a knee issue. And he got ahead for just a couple. Stopped by Servasier Dennis. Terrific linebacker for Pitt who will play all three of their linebacker spots today. Hey, the guy Clemson's got to get going early is Justin Ross right here. He's been pressing a little bit. He's had a lot of drops, but he is the most talented guy they have. Here's Shipley again. Good oh. cut, and he stumbled across the 40-yard line. It looked like he had much more to gain, but he just tripped and fell with barely enough for the first down. Yeah, the little stretch play. He saw some daylight and cut it inside and just got tripped up, or that was probably going to the house. Well, you were on the field before the game. You made the point about this surface. Yeah, it's it's not the strongest grass. It's it's a little loose. It's a little higher than I'm sure Clemson is used to at home in South Carolina. It is due within the last few weeks, we're told. Oyanga Lale, deep ball! Broken up, intended for Bo Collins. And Brandon Hill, the safety, saved the touchdown. Well, the ball was thrown over the opposite shoulder where the receiver thought it was going to be, and it hung in the air. It was underthrown, and that allowed the safety hill to get there and make the play. If the ball is thrown out towards the goal line, they probably have a touchdown. You will have chances to make big plays against Pitt. They play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Here's Will Brown. Good run after the catch, and he spins ahead for a first down. That is what Clemson has been missing on offense also, is the little slot-type receiver that they've always had. They've had some injuries, and to see Will Brown now get to make a play like that, that, that's a big part of what Clemson's pass offense has been over the years. They've tried to play Justin Ross in the slot. He's not really comfortable there. That was a good sign for Clemson's offense, that play. First catch of the season for the graduate student, Will Brown, after the run. Bang! It's intercepted! Picked off by Damari Mathis. And he runs it back to the 20. Tackled by Davis Allen. Hansy, how they officiate the game is a big deal for us. They let him get away with the contact. And Mathis comes away with the turn. Last year when Kenny Pickett was intercepted three times on his first nine passes, and Clemson had a 31 to nothing lead after the first quarter. High snap, Pickett got it down. Gave it to Israel Vanakanda, an emerging force and running back, coming off the best game of his career, 140 yards last week in Blacksburg in their win against Virginia Tech. They're going consistently up tempo at the start of this game, nearly midway through the first quarter. No score. Now whether that's not a normal part of Pitt's MO, it is when you play Clemson because Brent Venables is a defensive coordinator that likes to wait as long as he can. He wants to play defense susceptible to tempo. It hasn't helped the pit offense yet. They haven't had a first down. Can they convert on third and two? Pick it. He's a good runner, as we told you, and he dives for the first down. See, that, that is that quote that we had in the open, that you got to play with a little chip. It's not there. He's a good scrambler. He's particularly good when he scrambles to his right, and he just outruns Skowski to the marker for the first down. I mean, those are two players that play the game exactly the same way. They both have a linebacker mentality. It's just one of them's a quarterback. The man of Kanda, sophomore out of Brooklyn, New York. He was the Gatorade New York State High School Player of the Year at Abraham Lincoln High School in 2019. R.J. Mickens took him down. That game last week against the Hokies, his first career 100-yard rushing game. It has been impressive. Back-to-back 20-point-plus -back wins in conference play at Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. The pass deflected and almost intercepted off the hands of Mario Goodrich, who had two of those interceptions of Kenny Pickett last year in Death Valley.
He was trying to get the ball to Addison, who was the second receiver out there, and Goodrich able to get up and get a hand on the football. Again, when Kenny Pickett scrambles to his right, he's very effective throwing the football, much different than when he scrambles to his left. They bring a blitz. He throws over the middle, and it's caught for a first down. Jared Wayne, the receiver, junior from Peterborough, Ontario, swung down by Tyler Venables. One of the things Kenny Pickett said he wanted to work on, his pocket footwork and presence, his poise in the pocket and throwing the deep ball. Right there you saw poise in the pocket. Here's a tackle over now formation. Unbalanced line for Pitt. Pickett flushed backwards by a blitz by Mario Goodrich. And forced to throw it away. Well-timed blitz by Brent Venables. When Pitt does this, they take their left tackle, Carter Warren, they move him over to the right side, and then this guy right here is a tight end or a wide receiver. Clemson was not fooled by the formation. Pitt will throw or run out of it. Normally, you think if they put three linemen to one side, they're going to run, but Pitt will do both. And Banacanda dropped for a loss. Excellent penetration by Trey Williams, the freshman from Windsor, Connecticut. Yeah, he just whipped the guard, Marcus Miner. Great quickness into the backfield. Again, this is a defense that is missing some guys, an offense is missing some guys, but they have recruited so well. One good thing for Clemson, Tyler Davis, number 13, is back in the ball game. He has been out for a long time right there. One of the real leaders on the interior of this Clemson defense. This time after surgery for a torn bicep, Pickett again pressured and throws incomplete, trying to get it to Lucas Krull. And Tyler Venables had the coverage. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Dabo Sweeney told me pregame that Tyler Davis was cleared to play by doctors just this Wednesday night. He said Davis was chomping at the bit to get back out on the field. He brings confidence with his leadership and experience, and he said he's one of the best players on this team and one of the most savvy players, so he brings a huge confidence boost. They're still without Brian Brzee, maybe their best defensive player, defensive lineman, who's out for the year with an ace. Goes into the end zone to the goal line, but they couldn't rescue it. And Clemson will start from the 20. The defense rolls up. 32 for Pittsburgh. No score, just under five minutes to go. Opening quarter. DJ Uyangalale all the way to the 38 yard line for a gain of 18. We take a look at DJ, a couple throws early. You talk about making the common play. Third and six, take the quick route. Don't throw against double coverage. And then on the interception, it's just a, a ball that he's got to place to the outside, away from the defender. Just a couple errant positions of the ball, but that was a good run to start this drop. His runs have been their best offense. Phil Maffa, freshman running back, gets the carry to the 45-yard line. Here's the interception. This ball has to be thrown to the outside, away from the defender, to give your receiver a chance. Dabo told Molly, we've got to make the routine plays. That first play was a routine play. He went the wrong place with the ball. And we have to make competitive plays. That's tight throws against tight man coverage. Receiver and quarterback on the same page. After the run they out wide, it goes to Bo Collins, and he's dumped immediately by Marquez Williams, redshirt junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. This pit defense is very aggressive, a lot of man coverage, eyes right on the play. That was Marquez Williams, read the quarterback, saw the quick throw, made a quick break up, and brings up another third down situation for Clemson. They're 0 for 1 on third down so far in the ballgame. In the conference on third down, Clemson at 38%, third down at six. Davis Allen, a big target, number 84. It's a deep ball, and it is caught! A Joe, a Joe runs under it. And a rare big play of 20 yards plus for Clemson this season. That's 34 yards and a first down. Yeah, only their 13th play like that. Now, this is a perfect throw. Out over the outside shoulder. Your receiver had a step on the defender. Ball placement was perfect that time by DJ. 
Hoffa could break free from a leg tackle. Well, it was shocking when we looked at the numbers, the lack of big plays for Clemson on offense. 128th in the country with now 13 plays of 20 plus. Only Colorado and Rice yeah. have had fewer plays of 20 plus than Tony Elliott's offense. Uh, and again, offensive football is too hard. You're not going to put together 12 and 13 play drives against good defenses. You've got to have chunk plays. A cop hit in a corner blitz. Justin Ross fighting to try to get to the end zone. Brandon Hill wouldn't let go. But it is to the five yard line and first and goal for Clemson. Well, it was a good read. It was a corner blitz. That's the quarterback and the wide receiver being on the same page. They were both able to make the adjustment. First down, goal situation for Clemson. Got to be prepared for DJ running the football in this part of the field as well. They just did get their defenders off the field, down to the goal line, and short of it is Will Shipley. It'll be second and goal from about six inches out. Phil Campbell made the tackle for the Panthers, coached by Pat Narduzzi. Really good double team as you take a look at the replay and the progressive pylon cam. Double team by Jordan McFadden and Mac Bockhorst on the left side, and Shipley got right in behind there and almost got that ball to the goal line. You can see his knee down before the ball crossed the plane. 65, Matt Bockhorst. And the injured players, Matt Bockhorst. We talked to Dabo Sweeney and Tony Elliott about other reasons why the offense has had a tough go of it. Injuries, yeah. inconsistency on the offensive line. Bockhorst, one of their best, really an emotional leader. Second year starter at guard out of Cincinnati, St. Xavier High School, where he was an Under Armour All. They've had three different starting left guards this year, including Bockhorst. Tonight, Saturday night football, a Big Ten battle in Bloomington. Heisman hopeful quarterback C.J. Stroud. Leading the number five and rising Ohio State Buckeyes against Indiana. That's at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. The Buckeyes have won 25 in a row against Indiana. Well, how do you to me, as a Heisman voter, I want to see how guys play in big games. That That's what I put more credence in anything. So like a game like this today for Kenny Pickett is huge. You know, I think he's played at an elite level, but when you play on a stage like this against a team like Clemson, if you play well, that gets people's attention across the country. That does not look good no. for Bockhorst and Clemson. They've had eight different offensive linemen start games this year. No. I mentioned three different starting left guards, three different starting centers, two different starting right guards through the first six games of this season. Mason Trotter, the center, didn't play a snap until last week. On second and goal, it's a touchdown with ease. Bill Maffa. And Clemson is first on the board. On the first career touchdown for the freshman from Loganville, Georgia. Ran right behind the replacement left guard. Marcus Tate, number 74, came into the ball game to replace Bockhorst. And Moffa ran right behind him. Good push up front. Clemson on the board first. Couple nice throws and reads by DJ Uyungalale on that drive. BT Potter adds the extra point. Moff out of Grayson High School in Georgia, the same school that sent several players to Clemson, including Wayne Gallman, the fine running back, who moved on to the New York Giants. Likely move up. They play Clemson, what will be a very important game, you would suspect, on November 20th. That is in Winston-Salem. Should point out that Clemson is ranked in the coaches poll, but unranked in the AP poll, the 24 in the coaches. Touchback by BT Potter, and here's Matt Berry. 
Okay, Sean, time now. Rocket Mortgage Student of Rank. The Rose Bowl, DTR to Casimir Allen, 14 nothing Bruins in the first quarter. By the way, Penn State, Illinois, eight overtimes. Blackledge, what do you got on that? <laughs> you better have a bunch of two-point plays now. Better have some new creative ones. My goodness. Flat off the hands of Vincent Davis. Dangerously so. As Sheridan Jones was in the area for Clemson. Yeah, Sheridan Jones, if he'd have known where the football was, he might have made a play on the ball. The ball had some hot sauce on it coming out to the back. Pickett now just three out of eight. That ball is a juggling catch by Gavin Bartholomew. He's the backup tight end. They have two very solid tight ends. Mark Whipple said last year we didn't have any tight ends we could throw the ball to. Yeah, I like both these guys. Bartholomew, a true freshman, small school over in Pennsylvania. Lucas Kroll is a grad transfer from Florida, really good pass catcher, both big bodies, and they give versatility to this offense. 11 yard gain under a minute to go in the opening quarter. Pick it on target to the 40 yard line. A gain of four on a completion to Jordan Addison. We talked to Dabo Sweeney. I mean, he was raving about Kenny Pickett. Just says the game looks slow to him. He says he's a real rhythm passer. We've got to affect him. A couple of those third down plays and earlier drives, they were able to affect him. His last couple throws, rhythm throws by Kenny Pickett. They're finding success over the middle to the running back Vincent Davis there, swung down by Skalski, but forward progress to the 49-yard line of Pitt, and another Panther first down. And one of the things that Brent Venables has to weigh, if I pressure and leave guys in man-to-man, -man, they've got a lot of weapons all over the field. This empty backfield, they've got a lot of matchups. Over the middle again, Kroll has the ball knocked down. And it looks like Clemson has it at the 35-yard line. Nolan Turner popped the ball out on the catch by Kroll. This is the kind of matchup you want. You want Kroll working on the safety. Turner, it's a good throw and catch. Turner just doesn't give up on the play and knocks it out. And E.T. Rubin, the recovery for Clemson. For that game last year, there was five pit turnovers in the ball game, four interceptions and a fumble. As you mentioned, the game was pretty much over after one quarter when Clemson jumped out to a big lead. There's another big turnover. Pat Narduzzi's hollering at the officials. He thought it was an incomplete pass and that this should be reviewed, but it's not going to happen. Clemson with the ball and a seven-point lead. Kobe Pace running room outside, lowers his shoulder and gets a first down. On the last play of the first quarter. Davo Sweeney said recently he feels like the offense is starting to find its rhythm. It has here late in the first quarter. Little Caesars are crazy, calzone, Julian pepperoni. It's so tasty. Back here in Pittsburgh with Clemson offensive lineman Matt Bockhorst was just carted off the field with ice on his right knee. And when he tried to put weight on his right leg, he yelled out in pain, couldn't walk on his own. And Sean, you mentioned coaches say he is the heartbeat of this Clemson offense. The vocal leader just said sometimes they have to talk to him about refining his delivery. To be a little too passionate and direct with some of his teammates. DJ Uwe under the lay. Ducks ahead for two. And they're up to 75 yards rushing yeah. just one play into the second quarter. Well, they felt that Boston College and Syracuse, they finally have got some consistency in their run game. And that is opening up opportunities in the pass game. Now, in the past, at Syracuse, they didn't capitalize on opportunities throwing the ball. Today, they've hit a couple good plays off this run game. Kobe Pace, the running back, he took the handoff. And got stacked up at the 50-yard line. Chase Pine, first there for Pittsburgh, playing in his 52nd career game. They have 13 super seniors, sixth-year players. And a big third-down opportunity for the Pitt defense right now. 
They can create some pressure. Probably going to get some kind of man underneath. Four receivers, two to each side for Uy Ungalale. Pressure up the middle. He got it off, but it wasn't well timed with Justin Ross. They threw that one well before Justin Ross was out of his break, which is okay if you put it right on the guy, but that ball was thrown to the sideline, and Ross never had a chance. Here's Will Spires to punt it away to Jalen Barden. Fifth year as the starting punter for Spires, his 63rd career game. And another good kick and a fair catch at the 11. Here's Matt Berry. Gentlemen, it's gone final. Nine overtimes. Brandon Peters, first action since week zero. Casey Washington, back in the end zone. Ball game. Illinois upsets Penn State in Happy Valley, 20 to 18. Well, we'll let you ponder that about your alma mater. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh did not score in the first quarter. Did score in the fourth quarter, Virginia Tech, but they were nursing a big lead. They really were just trying to run out the clock. Here's their biggest play so far. Israel Abanakanda out to the 35-yard line, a 24-yard run. Very patient runner, and he's got great speed, but he still has patience to wait behind the blocks and, and make people miss. Nice run to start this drive for Pittsburgh. They need a couple chunk plays in their offense. Four-man rush. Pickett stepped into that throw on target to Jordan Addison. He's thrown down at the 40-yard line of Clemson by Andrew Mukuba, the freshman safety. Nice job by Taysier back number 11 in that bunch formation, kind of clearing out the defense. He ran the deep route, and Addison kind of ran the in route behind him, and Kenny Pickett found him for a big play. That's the two biggest plays now that Pitt has had in the ball game back to back. That pass was 25 yards. Pickett to Addison. Pickett. Running out of time, throws it away. Kuba came on the blitz. True freshman out of Austin, Texas. He started in the season opener against Georgia. They lost Landon Sanders, yeah. who they thought might be a starter preseason shoulder surgery. No big deal because this guy's been terrific. He has been, and they play with so much with safeties. A lot of times, three safeties. Like right now, they've got three safeties in the ball game. Hanna Kanda stopped at the 37 yard line led by James Skalski. You got Nolan Turner, Mukaba, and Tyler Venables that are in there together as safeties. They've got to be good in the run support in this defense, but they also are going to be called on to play man to man coverage. They'll have a lot of versatility. This might be four down territory for Pittsburgh. Here comes a safety blitz. Pickett is taken down back at the 45 yard line. Balin Spector, the linebacker, blitzing. Effectively so. Well, the back has to choose between two guys that are coming. And he makes the choice to take one. But that left Balin Spector with a straight line to the quarterback. And Kenny Pickett had nowhere to go. John, I think you're right. I think it may have been four down territory if they don't have the loss of yardage play there on third down. Now they have to punt. Now the Coles, those linebackers, Skalski and Spectre, the Bruise brothers. Now one and a half sacks on the year for Spectre. Chris Dulu punts again. And this time they do down it inside the two. And a big roar from the crowd after they failed to do it at the other end of the field. Trey Tipton was there. Work by the Pitt special teams. They lay one under center, handed it off to Will Shipley, who got belted after a pickup of three. This Pitt defense on first and second down, I mean, they, they don't try to fool you. I mean, 
This press quarters coverage that Pat Narduzzi ran when he was the defensive coordinator at Michigan State, here again, they press on the outside, they come downhill with the linebackers to stop the run. DJ throws in a juggling catch made, very nearly another drop. But Bo Collins able to take it in for a Clemson first down. These are the players that have the most pressure in this defense. It's the safeties. That's Eric Hallett, who's in coverage on a slot receiver in man-to-man, -man, but he's coming from 10 yards deep. That's the most pressure is on the two safeties in this, in this defense. Shipley tripped up and again frustrated as there was more there for him. If he could have gotten away from Keyshawn Camp, an excellent defensive tackle. It was a question mark all week with an ankle injury, but he's in there toughing it out today. I talked to C.J. Spiller, the running backs coach on the field before the game, and I said, tell me about Shipley. He says, well, I can't tell him this yet, but he's really going to be special. <laughs> if, he, if he keeps doing what he's supposed to be doing, he's going to be really something else. Coming from a guy who was very special himself, C.J. Spiller, now coaching the running backs. His alma mater, Davis Allen, the catch for the Tigers. And that gets them another first down. They move from their own two out to the 26, under 10 minutes to go in the half. And the Tigers, an underdog in ACC play for the first time in 48 games, leading 7-0. DJ tried to pull it down and run again, not that time. He had done that successfully a couple of times already, but Dayon Hayes there to stop any forward momentum. Now this is definitely a called quarterback run. You can tell that because Shipley is leaving the backfield to go block, but the pocket, the, everything just collapsed. Good penetration into the backfield by Hayes, and Pitt gets a negative yardage play on first down. Shipley, first down. Lowers head at the end of the run. They follow the lead blocking of Davis Allen, the tight end, John Patrician, the tackle. Watch this. It looks like he's coming all the way across, and he's going to circle back and block at the point of attack. They pull the backside guard and the tight end. They get the flow of the pit defense going one way, and Shipley cuts it back with good speed and burst for the first down. Dabble said they have been getting the running game going, and it's continuing again today. Uyunga, it's dropped. And when you talk about why don't they have more big plays, there it is. Another drop yep. that would have been not only an explosive play, this one would have been a touchdown by Shipley. The number three receiver on the inside. He's working against a backup defensive back, the star linebacker, Petrushin, and he beats him badly. And you can't throw the ball any better than DJ did right there. And Dabo has seen that too many times this season already. Perfect play call. Hit brought a blitz. Go out wide. And they'll mark him out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Well, even if Clemson doesn't get any points out of this drive, the fact that they've moved from outside of their own two with the way their defense has played all year, you are flipping the field and playing to the strength of your team, which is their defense. Third down and four. Tigers at their own 44, leading 7 to nothing. Oyango LA short set and an incomplete pass. Tried to jam it in to Davis Allen. He was surrounded. They're well aware of his presence after Allen had eight catches last week at Syracuse. He was surrounded, but he could have he, he could have put the ball on his numbers for the first down. It just was not a, a real accurate throw by DJ. And the pit defense gets the hole. They dodged the bullet with the drop by Shipley. And now they'll get the ball back for their offense. Spires to punt. He executed a fake punt at Syracuse last week, completed a 17 yard pass on fourth and five. Great catch by Davis Allen. Hard nowhere to go. Tried to return that one. No yardage on the return.
of a 45-yard punt. Well, DJ put the money on the ball, on the money on this one. Shipley not able to make the catch and Davos. Hashtag student section sauce. To get the committee's attention, go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. One of the differences here at Pitt, this is not an on-campus facility. Campus in Oakland. Used to play at Pitt Stadium at the top of that hill. Now they play at Heinz Field. As they share with the Pittsburgh Steelers on first down, Vincent Davis ahead for just a couple. Now this game is really, you know, for Pitt's offense going about the way we thought. I mean, we knew this was going to be the best defense that they faced, right, with Clemson. One of the best scoring defenses in college football. They've got speed, they've got talent. Mark Whipple, offensive coordinator, knew it's going to be a four quarter type of game. Ooh. Jockey Jacques Louis got knocked around. Managed to keep moving forward and hang on to the ball. And he got close to the first down marker. They'll need one here on third down. And they go quickly again. And Vincent Davis, the running back. And he has the first down across the 20. But we wondered about the pit stats. They clearly have a very good offense, but the scoring that we mentioned second in the country at 48.3 per game, certainly largely a product of 77 yeah. against New Hampshire and 51 against UMass. Yeah, last week, 28 in Blacksburg on a windy day was their lowest output. Corner blitz by Booth, who's back in action today after missing last week. Deep ball, and Addison could not run under it with Nate Wiggins in coverage, a freshman from Atlanta, matched up against one of the best receivers in the country, Jordan Addison. Nice job by the back, picking up that corner blitz. That allowed Kenny Pickett to go ahead and launch that ball and give Addison a chance, just a slight overthrow. Pickett now 9 out of 16 for 89 yards. The run on second and 10 yields nothing. Vincent Davis again. Just really like these inside linebackers of Clemson. Skalski and Specter share the team lead and tackles. Both hard nosed guys. That time Skalski on a run blitz. Got in the backfield for the stop. Pick it a beautiful set and throw the completion for a first down to Jared Wayne. See, find your matchup. Where can I go? Let's go against a linebacker with a wide receiver. That was what they had. Jared Wayne was the inside receiver, matched up against Barrett Carter, a freshman linebacker, and that's a matchup that favors the offense. Second catch for Wayne, 23rd of the year, second most on their team. Nice move by Vincent Davis. As he got close to the first down, danced away from Jalen Phillips for a gain of eight. You go empty set, you put the ball in your quarterback's hands, and you let him find the matchups. You spread this defense out. Pickett threw it over the head of his intended receiver, Melky Stovall. We spoke with Pat Narduzzi yesterday about Kenny Pickett. Pat was an assistant at Michigan State defensive coordinator when they had Kirk Cousins. And Pat said, I love Kirk Cousins, but I think Kenny Pickett is a better player than Kirk Cousins. There's Mark D'Antonio, who was the head coach at Michigan State, here to cheer on his great friend Pat Narduzzi today. His second year in retirement. For the great job he did with Sparty. Pickett runs for the first down. On third and two, he got three. He's and his parents are here, as they always are. Dad Ken on the right of your screen, Mom Casey. Big part of his decision to come back for another year. They realized it was the right thing to do. He is really a good short yardage runner. I mean, that was a design run, but on quarterback sneaks, I mean, he is a physical kid and very effective in short yardage runs. Under four and a half to go till halftime. Clemson leading seven to nothing. Pickett has Addison open and he hangs on. 
At the 27-yard line, he got hit hard in the air by Jalen Phillips. But it's a 28-yard play, and Addison injured on the play. Had three receivers to that side, and Kenny Pickett saw Addison, maybe got the ball to him a little bit late, but Addison, knowing he was going to take a shot, held on to the football. Landed hard on his right arm. It looked from that view that maybe just got the wind knocked out of him. Pickett zips one behind his intended receiver, Taysir Mack. The tight end crawl was the underneath receiver, Addison going down the sideline. Kenny Pickett got him the football, clean hit. Took a shot on the back on his way to the ground. So he's still trying to catch his breath. They need him back out there. It's an important drive. He's by far their leading receiver. And this time out First might score. actually help Pitt and by getting Addison back in the football game. Clemson leading 7 to nothing, but Pittsburgh in the Heinz Field. All the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates along the Allegheny as well. Here's a screen on second and 10. Israel or Banacanda. Not a lot there. And here comes another third down, as we said, heading to break. They're three for three on third down, and Jordan Addison returns to the game now for the Panthers. Pickett 13 for 22 for 142. We have Addison on a safety right now. Design roll to the right. Throwing on the run. Corner of the end zone. Addison beats the safety turner for the touchdown. First time by design, Mark Whipple has rolled Kenny Pickett out of the pocket, by him a little time, allowed that deep route to open up, and a perfect strike on the move to Addison. Oh, the extra point, no good. Sam Scarton rifled it off the upright. That's his third missed PAT this season. Here's a look at the touchdown. You can hear in the background the referee, Jeff Flanagan. They'll get another shot at the extra point because the Tigers were offside. A beautiful throw by Kenny Pickett to Addison. Addison came back for that third down play. Nice design. And now a second chance to tie the football game. Pickett's thrown 22 touchdown passes to one interception this year. Scarton. Still a little closer to that upright penalty. than Pitt fans would offside. like. I think they were offsides again. I think they're lined up offsides. Well, as close offside. as that one was, I think Pat Narduzzi will say, we'll take the kick. That penalty will be declined. Point. The touchdown catch, his 10th of the season, tied 868 in his career. And he moves one ahead of Alex Van Pelt for the most completions in Pittsburgh history. And a lot more football still to be played for Pickett. Back in the studio, here's Matt Berry. Okay, Sean, coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, you mentioned history. We had that in Penn State and Illinois. What a finish we had there. Plus, Oklahoma again needed a second-half comeback. Caleb Williams against the star. And UCLA and Oregon, we've got a good one. Brewing of the Rose Bowl, Sam I Please join me coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. We thought some of the top teams in the country, I believe six of the top seven teams in the rankings were favored by 20 or more points today. Thought it might be a breeze for teams like Oklahoma and Penn State. It obviously was not. After the play fake, DJ Uyunga lay a battle for the ball, and it's incomplete. Bo Collins wrestling with the safety, Eric Hallett. And the ball hit the ground. It's a good read by DJ and a good throw. He gave his receiver a chance. Just an excellent play by Hallett in man coverage on a slot receiver. 
and knocks it out. Hallett's the guy that replaced probably the heart and soul of this defense a year ago, DeMar Hamlin, the safety, a four-year starter. And Hallett is a guy who's got to take that responsibility as the leader in the back end of this defense. They had five defensive players drafted earlier this year in the NFL draft, including two All-American defensive ends. Here comes a blitz and a pass off the hands of a Joe Joe. Tough catch. Well, they've had two blatant drops today, 15 for the year, including a ball that would have been a touchdown to Will Shipley. Well, that ball had to come out when it did because Servassier Dennis was coming unblocked on a blitz to the inside. And DJ had to get rid of the football. It's the loudest this place has been today here on third and ten. And Pittsburgh has called a timeout. Pittsburgh. I don't think Pat was calling the timeout to make the crowd louder. As you said, it was clearly as loud as it's been all day. You know, for DJ, last year in those two starts, he was unbelievable. This year, it's been a struggle. It's either been bad ball placement, not putting it where his receiver has the best chance to make the catch, or it's been a case of when he is accurate with the football, his receivers drop it. We've seen drops again today. It's been a consistent theme. This one would have been a touchdown. And it's just been that combination. Sometimes it's on the quarterback not putting the ball where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it's on the guy not catching the football. Well, he stepped in as the starter last year when Trevor Lawrence tested positive for COVID-19. Memorable debut against Boston College. They were down by 18 points. He went 30 for 41 for 342. Two touchdowns brought him back. Then the historic game we chronicled earlier in the second start against Notre Dame. And he has not picked off uh, as a starter where he left off last year. And he's surrounded by Panthers. Puts it up for grabs oh, and lucky boy. to get away with it. Ross had inside position on Brandon Hill, but it was Hill who poked it away. And good pressure by the ends, Deslin Alexander and Haba Baldonado. Yeah, he's very fortunate here because he just kind of threw this into double coverage. And very lucky that that one wasn't intercepted. Justin Ross able to at least knock the ball away and prevent an interception. Will Spires to punt again. 3.03 to go in the half. Oh, Pick that ball up. A big mistake. As low as the kick was, he had plenty of time to pick that up and get the ball upfield for at least 10 yards. For Jake Cradle, the offensive lineman, telling him they tossed themselves plenty of field position with the failure to pick that one up. It wound up as a 51 yard punt. Week 7, Monday Night Football. Alvin Kamara, the Saints in Seattle, to take on DK Metcalf and the Seahawks. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And we also would note that Payne and Eli Manning return this week. On ESPN 2, congratulations to uh, Eli Manning being honored at Ole Miss today. Deservedly so. They put the name Manning in each end zone. Understandably so. Israel Abanakanda, the ball carrier. And he got two. Each team with two timeouts left as we approach two and a half minutes to go until halftime. Four wide receivers for Kenny Pickett. Pass incomplete, and here comes a flag from center field for pass interference against Trenton Simpson, the linebacker covering the wide receiver, Jared Wayne. See, again, you go empty backfield with five guys out, and you find out, okay, who are the safeties covering? Defense number 22. That is an automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Who are the safeties covering and who are the linebackers covering? Is it a wide receiver? I like that matchup if you're Kenny Pickett. If I have the protection, that's where I'm going with the ball. Pickett 
spun away from the rush several times. Here comes the flag for a holding call. As he spun away. That might help Dabo Sweeney holding. calm down a little bit. He didn't like the pass interference call. Ten yard penalty. Got Carter Warren so holding. Down. On Miles Murphy, number 98, a little inside move. A well, far cry from a year ago when Kenny Pickett and Pittsburgh really struggled. They got annihilated, never in the game, down 31 to nothing at the end of the quarter at Clemson. Pat Narduzzi said, We're a much different team this year. They were without three starting offensive linemen last year. Havana Candace stacked up after a very short game. The veteran Pittsburgh team, I mean, this is the year if they are going to take that next step. Yep. A lot of guys came back. You know, not just Kenny Pickett. A lot of other guys came back, having good seasons, veteran leadership. Good poise in the pocket and a drop. Oh, oh boy! Oh my goodness! Savannah Kanda dropped it, and then Bale and Specter dropped him. It almost looks like Specter didn't know the ball came out. Like he felt he had to separate the ball from the defender. The ball was on the ground when he hit him. Now the question is, is it going to be called a targeting foul? Apple play, personal foul, and this is roughness number 10 of the defense with targeting. Well, let's bring oh, in our yeah. rules expert, Matt. Matt Austin. Looks like the contact is into the right shoulder of a Banacanda. Matt, what do you think? I, I agree with everything you just said. Originally, I thought it was definitely targeting, but I do think he got his shoulder low enough, got him in the chest. Uh, I would not be surprised. This should be overturned. But it would still, could it still be a personal foul, right? Oh, it's it's a late hit, hit, no matter what. Yeah. Yes, the 15 yards is no matter what, but he should be able to keep playing. Right. I would agree with that, too. And that would be a huge loss if he can't. He's their leading tackler. He had 19 tackles in their loss at NC State, most under Dabo Sweeney in his 14 years as head coach. Replay officials Jack Kramer, who made a really good tennis racket when I was a kid. I don't think it's the same Jack Kramer, who is also a great tennis player. The replay official? That's or? not the same oh. Jack Kramer. We're pretty sure. I think the Jack Kramer I'm talking about is a little older. After further review, there was no targeting on the play. Number 10 may remain in the game. However, a dead ball personal foul penalty, 15 yards, will be enforced. First down. Well, they definitely got that right. Uh, the unfortunate thing for Brent Venables now, it's 15 yards at the end of the play. It's a first down, a minute 48 for Pitt, Kenny Pickett, and two timeouts. Remember, Clemson won the toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. Pitt would love to steal that momentum right here at halftime. Only a three-man rush brought by Brent Venables. Taysir Mack, the catch. Another 60-year senior. He spent two years at Indiana. Now four at Pitt. He's two and a half yards short of the first down. Their field goal kicking is a question mark. They've only tried four all year. Abanda Kanda, first down. Shoved out by Nolan Turner. But in Tiger territory, inside the 44-yard line. Mark Whipple very comfortable and confident with his quarterback right now, spreading things out, letting him find matchups, and credit the front five of Pitt for giving him enough protection to throw the football. Pickett, lots of running room, slides down at the 37. Perhaps they'll, they'll mark it back where he started the slide at the 38. 
There's another three-man rush. I got to expect that they're going to try to pressure Kenny Pickett here soon because if you only rush three and give him time, he's going to find holes in your defense. Here they come. He has plenty of time. He's on target. The ball's dropped by Jalen Barden with Mario Goodrich nearby for Clemson. Barden, who also cost them some field position, but he didn't scoop up that punt. Interestingly, Addison not on the field again at this critical juncture of the football game. Probably not in field goal range. Tentative rush. Almost like they're spying picket. He throws, and that one could not be squeezed by a Banacanda with Barrett Carter, freshman linebacker, in coverage. Really good job by the linebacker Carter. He's out there in space with the running back. Kenny Pickett tried to throw a back shoulder. They're going to go for it, it seems, on fourth down. Fourth and five. Madison is back on the field now. He's at the top of the screen right there in the bunch formation. Here comes pressure. Picked up nicely. Man wide open! Touchdown Pittsburgh! Taysir Mack! Nine yards! Garden for the extra point. He has to be a little shaken by what transpired the first time around. That one much closer to dead center. And Pittsburgh leads for the first time today with 40 seconds to go in the half. Again, great formation. You've got two receivers right here. Now, this is a safety and this is a corner. And Kenny Pickett is going to read the matchup and say, I like my receiver on a linebacker, Barrett Carter, and you can see why. Taysir Mack easily beats him right at the beginning of the route. The protection is there. There's no safety help. And Kenny Pickett with the right decision of where to go with the football. We saw it earlier on the touchdown to Jordan Addison against a safety. That time it was Taysir Mack working on a linebacker. And Kenny Pickett gets his second touchdown of the day. Helping his Heisman candidacy for sure. 218 yards passing and two touchdowns in the first half against the number two scoring defense in the country. Clemson had allowed only 12 and a half points per game. Pittsburgh with 14 here in the first half. Sam Sauls kicks off. Returnable for Will Shipley. Will Shipley room outside across the 30. And out of bounds at the 36 yard line. It was the kicker, Ben Sauls, who had to take him out. Kenny Pickett making history now, it seems almost. With every pass, he just moved past the great Trevor Lawrence for fifth most passing yards in a career in ACC history. Up to 10,136, and if he stays healthy, he'll likely become number one all time at Pittsburgh and pass Alex Van Pelt. Of course, they weren't in the ACC when Alex Van Pelt played here in the late 80s and early 90s. DJ wants to throw it, and they want to throw him down. And finally, they do. It's hard to get him on the ground. He's Big Cinco at 6'4", 250, but Baldonado led the way for the sack. And it looked like his eyes immediately went down to the rush on that play, Sean. The last couple throws, he has not looked like he trusts his protection, and he's not looking downfield at receivers. His eyes are down, seeing where the rush, the rush is coming from. Watch how his eyes kind of go down. Of course, you can't really see him, but you can tell he is not comfortable with what he thinks the protection is going to be. 
If you're a quarterback and you play against these teams, you expect to be taken to the ground. Since 2019, these are the top two sack teams in the nation. Pittsburgh number one, Clemson 11 behind. Part of the reason that both these teams get so many sacks is they play a lot of man coverage. So there's no real easy windows to throw. And so as a quarterback, you know I'm not going to get the kind of separation. I've got to throw guys open some and anticipate breaks. Extra rushers. When you're playing man to man, there's a Clemson timeout. They want to stay aggressive. Down by a score. That's in a traffic and incomplete. Off the hands of a Joe a Joe. The sophomore from Brooks, Alberta. First Canada signee See, for this, Clemson football. That's the throw that DJ has to get better at. The back shoulder throw. You've got big receivers. They have big bodied receivers that aren't going to run away from people. But that ball has to be placed better. It has to be thrown outside, away from the defender, so your receiver has the best chance at making the catch. That's an area that he still needs great improvement on. Well, young to lay nine for 20, but with a couple of crucial drops, including one that would have been a long touchdown. They go to the run to Kobe Pace on third down and 12. He did not get the first down. And it doesn't look like either coach is going to stop the clock. They're content to go to halftime. Abel Sweeney's defense gave up 195 yards in the second quarter as the game tilted in favor of the Panthers. The last two drives, Pitt went 90 yards and 76 yards. Well, presented by Papa John's. This is the ACC on ESPN. From Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, where the sun has broken through the clouds for the first time today. And where Pittsburgh, with 14 points in the second quarter, has taken a 14 to 7 lead on Clemson into the third quarter. Ben Saul kicks off for the Panthers. Will Shipley won't try to bring it back. And let's take a look at who's making big moves today, brought to you by SoFi. Well, it's a game of matchups. Jordan Addison against the safety, Nolan Turner. Turner's a good football player, but a little overmatched, especially with a perfect throw. And then the other touchdown, Taysier Mack, working on a freshman linebacker. This is a mismatch. Again, my formation, you find the matchups. The matchups is that's what happens in the NFL. Well, Pitt's got a former NFL offensive coordinator, Mark Whipple, and a future NFL quarterback in Kenny Pickett, and they're playing the same game today. Mark Whipple coached in the NFL with Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Cleveland. First play from scrimmage of the second half. It's Kobe Pace. Now to the 31-yard line, a gain of six. Halftime stats brought to you by PlayStation. 88 passing yards for Clemson, but you think about that yep. big drop by Shipley that would have been a long touchdown. And the third downs, I mean, that's the clear advantage for Pitt, especially late in that second quarter when they really started to make their move. Six of 11 against this very stout Clemson defense. It is now correct, 14-49. Clock will start on my signal. DJ Uyunglele. Nine for 20 for 88 yards. You saw the drops were a problem. No touchdowns, one interception. He rushed for 31 yards, averaged 6.2 per carry. Here's Pace, did well to stay on his feet and reached the 40 with a Tigers first down, tripped up by Deslin Alexander. Nice start to the third quarter here. A couple quick, easy passes, a couple nice runs. To get a good one two punch with Kobe Pace and Will Shipley. Of course, Moffa had the first touchdown of the game, the other freshman running back. Uyungle well, Lay keeps. And he lost the tackle. After it bounced past a couple of Pittsburgh Panthers, Kalijah Cansey knocked it free from. Oh, young lay and a big break for the Tigers that they got it back. Yeah, the reason that a Joe a Joe got it back is because Pitt was trying to scoop and score. The ball's going to get stripped out cleanly by Cansey. 
And there's two defenders that tried to pick it up, Hallett and the other safety, Brandon Hill, wanted to pick it up and run with it instead of just recovering it. And Ajoa Joe was able to come in from behind him and secure the football. Clemson did not turn it over in either their previous two games against Boston College and Syracuse. Pace going nowhere, thrown back by Haba Baldonado. You know, an interesting number, though, about this Clemson offense. They've only had two fumbles that they've lost this year, but that's the 15th time they've fumbled, where they actually put it on the ground but didn't lose it. They were very lucky they didn't lose that one. Nothing there on second and short sets up third down and three. You saw in the PlayStation stats, the Tigers are one for six on third down. Oyangole over the middle, caught, and it looked to be enough for the first down. It will be on the spot. Justin Ross to the 49 yard line of Pittsburgh. It's a tight throw and a tight window. Justin Ross on the crossing route. Knows he's going to get hit. It's good coverage by the corner. Damari Mathis. And DJ put it on him for the first down. Again, 20. Pace ahead for a couple. Of course, this has to be an emotional day, you would think, Todd, for Justin Ross. He's back in Pittsburgh where he had spinal surgery. The summer of 2020 missed all of last season. They thought it might be a career ending fusion situation for him. His surgeon, Dr. David Onkakwo, is here today. That's a special memory for Justin Ross. Came here to have surgery done by one of the best in the country. And obviously, oh my, goodness. Oh my goodness, the pitch is picked off. And it's going to be a touchdown for Servassier Dennis. This guy has a nose for the football. Now he's coming just on a run blitz, but he runs right into the path of the shovel pass. And DJ Uyunglele just throws it right to him. But Servassier, <laughs> he does that. I mean, he is around the football. He's a playmaker. And that was as big a play as this football game has seen. Well, they survived the Uyunglele fumble. But it didn't take much longer before they did turn it over. 50 yard return by Servassier Dennis, officially an interception. The second thrown by Uli Ungolale. Servassier Dennis, junior from Syracuse, New York. Never die. Well, you saw just as we went to break, Servassier Dennis summoned someone down to the railing to give her the ball. That's his mother, Corliss, who uh, during the TV commercial was in tears. Here's Will Shipley. Nice return for Clemson to the 30. Mrs. Dennis was a 10-year member of the United States Army. Servassier's dad, Cervantes, 12 years in the Army. And there was a period back in 2003 where Mrs. Dennis and Servasi thought they had lost her husband and Servasi's dad. They received word that he had been killed in the line of duty while in Kuwait. Turns out he was shot and injured, but he had not died. But for about a week, they thought he had passed away. There's Tyson Pumachan, who's in at quarterback now, taking over for DJ Uyunglele. Rossi Dennis very close to his parents and uh, what an emotional moment that was we thank Corliss Dennis for her service so I guess not surprising on the quarterback change here Todd uh, very ineffective delay again Pumachan handed it off to Will Shipley Tyson's a sophomore from Bridgeport Connecticut out of Avon Old Farms 
Very highly recruited. We talked to Dabble Sweeney last year about him. He said he's a bigger Russell Wilson. How ironic is it at this point in the season, two of the Heisman, considered Heisman frontrunners, Spencer Rattler and DJ Uyunglele, both find themselves on the bench. And Kenny Pickett, who wasn't even thought about really as a Heisman candidate, is emerging quickly as a top candidate. Tough situation for Pumachan to enter. He's thrown just 10 passes all year, completed seven. Rolling away from pressure. And throws short for a first down. Justin Ross the catch. And they convert on third down and six. Right now, you're just hoping that maybe he can change the mojo. Nice play there on third down to get a conversion. They have not had many conversions. And you're just hoping that maybe the change can bring a spark to your offense. Right now, they've got great field position, although they find themselves down two touchdowns after that last turnover. This is what John keeps, runs into Pittsburgh territory. Got pinballed around. That's a nifty run to the 35 yard line, and Pumachon has to be helped up. Baldonado and Brandon Hill. Put the hits on Pumachon at the end of that 17 yard run. The timeout has been called. There's an injured pit player on the field. It's Brandon has taken a 21 to 7 lead over Clemson on a defensive score by Savassie Dennis. Here in the third quarter, Pittsburgh has not run a play on offense in this quarter. DJ Uwe Ungalale removed after a second interception. Tyson Pumachan handed it off to Will Shipley, and Pumachan off the bench has Clemson on the move. You know, that timeout that we were just away was an injury timeout for a pit player, but I think it really helped Pumachan because he was slow getting up after that run, was able to go to the sideline, get some water, kind of clear the cobwebs a little bit and come out to resume this drive. Highly recruited player out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And ESPN, as you saw, had him the number eight quarterback in the country, the number one player in the state of Connecticut. Ross chopped down immediately. Nice tackle by A.J. Woods, who rotates in at cornerback, junior from Germantown, Maryland. For the last third down situation that they converted, Pumachan Rolled out to his left, left the pocket, made the nice throw on the move. Let's see if Randy Bates, defensive coordinator, decides to go after the new quarterback here on third and four. Shipley, far sideline, first down, Clemson. As he slid by the defender and passed the line to make. Deslin Alexander made the tackle. Looked like Brandon Hill had a shot at him. Time out. Injured player. And it's Deslin Alexander. Saw the Clemson trainer indicating to the pit medical folks that it was his left shoulder. He's their starting defensive end. Another one of those veterans, a fifth year senior. From Pompano Beach, Florida. Scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made. All state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, All State. On first down, Pumachon throwing for the end zone for Ross. And he caught it, but it looked like he was out of bounds, and he is. It's incomplete. This was a trick formation by Clemson. That's why they came out of the huddle quickly and snapped it quickly. You can see the foot out of bounds. The throw took him there, but that was the same kind of unbalanced line that Pittsburgh uses. And they snapped it quick, but it didn't pull the pit defense. Just a throw too far outside by Pumachon. Yeah, Shipley to his left at running back. The pass too quick for Bo Collins. It surprised him. And it was nearly picked off by Damari Mathis. Great pressure by John Morgan from the outside. Number six, 
Kind of forced that throw a little earlier than I think the receiver was anticipating it. Another third down play for Clemson's offense. Almost midway through the quarter, the pit offense still has not been on the field, but this raucous crowd does not mind as the defense has scored. They're hoping they can stop the Tigers on third and ten. They are in field goal range. Pumachon taken down for a two-yard loss by Kalijah Kansi. Kansi is a little bit undersized for a defensive tackle, but he's very pitchy. He's very quick. Watch his quickness off the ball gets past the center trotter the right guard can't cut him out and he's into the backfield when we spoke with Dabo Sweeney yesterday asked him who stands out to you on the pit defense he and Tony Elliott both said number eight he's a problem he was a problem on that one 42 yard field goal tried by BT Potter is right down the middle he's seven out of eight in field goals this season and that matches his longest field goal of the year. A good job by Pumachon off the bench, and now it's time for Taste of the Town with Todd Blackwell. Since will be a touchback as Barden decides not to try to run it back. And uh, my favorite part of Taste yeah. of the Town, what, what have we here? Well, these are the pierogies. These are the crescent-shaped little dumplings stuffed with, I think these are the hot Italian sausage ones that ironically, you know, historically or you would traditionally you would just stuff them with potatoes. But Helen said a lot of people here in Pittsburgh said, hey, put Italian sausage in it. That'd be good for tailgate. So brought okay. those. You can munch on those. These you can take home. These are cold. You can take those home with you on the plane and excellent. Heat them up at home. Add to my pierogi collection. <laughs> Vincent Davis. <laughs> The ball carrier for Pitt. That's a great food town. You probably had some tough choices. It is a good food town. This is a really good food town. But that, to me, you know, I first ate pierogies when I went to Penn State. I'd never heard of them when I lived in Ohio. Over here, there's a real strong Eastern European influence in the city of Pittsburgh. And was really happy to be able to feature Pierogies Plus and Helen and her staff. And he picked a long time between snaps for this Pitt offense prior to the half. Whoa, Vincent Davis <laughs> weaved his way. It's uh, almost like he did so much dancing, he danced himself to the ground there. Faked himself out, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, a lot of wiggle. <laughs> I wonder if he wound up wiggling himself into the grass. Well, first of all, he got a little chip on Miles Murphy, the defensive end, on his way out, and then still made the catch. Seven yard play, 18 out of 30 now, pick it for 225 and two scores. Davis ahead, and here is Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, I'm told Pitt wide receiver Jordan Addison is doubtful to return. He's still back in the locker room being evaluated for a concussion. Medical training staff tell me he started to feel symptoms of a concussion at halftime, and they think that he was injured on the play where he was tackled and the wind was knocked out of him. They say that he must have hit his head on that play, but I spoke with Pat Narduzzi. He told me he knows this will be a fourth quarter game, and he trusts that Kenny Pickett can get it done. That was top receiver. It's Taysir Mack, the veteran. What a beautiful throw. And he's a different looking guy than we've seen in the past. Yeah. Uh, for a lot, while, he played on a very sore, very severely injured ankle. And clearly, he's able to plant and throw with great velocity. Yeah. He really wanted to work on. He's surrounded by better players. And that was a big time throw. That was a big time hit by Goodrich. And Jalen Barden did well to hang on. The crowd could see that one coming. You know, we, we talked about this before. You see Kenny Pickett come to the sideline to get the play from Mark Whipple. They don't use signals. They don't do any kind of messaging. He likes to go over, and, they, and Mark Whipple likes to give him the play. And he doesn't just give him the play. A lot of times he gives him other information that is helpful to look for. Pickett throws, caught. Good run after the catch. Melky Stovall. To the 25-yard line. Well, no Jordan Addison, no problem for Pitt on this drive. Melky Stovall, a transfer from Hawaii, another one of those super seniors. 
getting the most out of his college eligibility and excellent work after the catch. Booth in coverage, and that inside spin was huge. 22 yards on the play, 16 after the catch. Pick it. Across the line of scrimmage, runs out of bounds, flag down, back behind the line of scrimmage. Offense from a 53. 10 yard penalty, still first down. Jake Cradle, redshirt junior, and he is the youngest of the starters up there in terms of college experience. The other four starters are all fifth year seniors on that pit offensive line. You know, I don't think this was a hold. I, what happened was Cradle is right here, the right guard. He's going to be working on his man, and the center, who has nobody to block, is going to come over and hit the man. That's what knocked him to the ground. That was not a takedown by the guard. That was the center who was unblocked coming over to make help, and, and that's a penalty that went against Pitt. I don't think that was a hold. Matt Austin, our referee, nodding in agreement. I mean, you know, you can call holding on nearly every play with offensive linemen. I get that. But that was not a hold. That was the center who made it look like the guard pulled him down to the ground. Oh, and Drexel is the center, backed up the all ACC player, Jimmy Morrissey, the last couple of years. Now on first and 20. Vincent Davis wrestled down by James Skowski. Kind of hovered over him for a moment. And the tight end Gavin Bartholomew came over to tell Skowski to get off his running back. This is the other thing that's different about this pit offense. They are much more confident in their running game in situations like this. They know they can throw it with Pickett. Here's the tight end Bartholomew. And a late flag thrown here right at the end of the play as he was being tackled. The freshman big guy, 6'4, 260. Had a touchdown last week at Virginia Tech, first, first of his career. Illegal block below the waist, number 22. 15-yard penalty, second down. He knows it. Vincent Davis out there in front of the play trying to get a block back inside. And this is big because both of these penalties have moved them back yep. out of field goal range. Yep. At the very least, they could have an attempt to restore their two-touchdown lead. Andre Powell is the running backs coach. There it is right there. Penalty on Davis. Second and 26. The catch again. Mark Whipple, they surprised Clemson with the run and a gain of 16. And I just think that I think they are so much more confident, not just with the offensive line, but because of the tight ends they have. It gives them more versatility in their offense to run the football. Now the tight ends are out, and they're four wide receivers right now, or five. It certainly helps the Whipple and Pickett have had three years together. Now they really attached at the hip. And he scrambles right, he throws. Another flag down in the area where you expect another offensive holding call. It was completed to Shockey Jacques Louis, but there's a flag down thrown by the umpire. Holding offense number 55. Yard penalty. That one's on Marcus Minor, the left guard. And here he is right here. It's only a three-man rush. And Kenny Pickett, see four man, steps up. Oh I don't know. Away from the play, I don't think his man, Miles well, there Murphy, it is. he's got a hold of the shirt. Usually, when your hands are inside, though, you get away with it. I mean, it's usually only called when the hands get outside, especially if a guy tries to break away and pursue the ball. Like I said, you can call holding just about every play in college or pro football. And they have started to do just that. <laughs> Third and 20, and they don't try many field goals. Abanacanda, he gets blasted at the 26. And when we spoke with Pat Narduzzi yesterday, and it's Skowski who's slow to get up, might be a stinger. Timeout. Play 
There's also an injured pit player. It's Abana Kanda. And the crowd thinks that perhaps Jalen Phillips got away with an illegal hit as they look at the replay. He's not a defenseless player because he's running with the football. He leads with the shoulder, but. Well, the crowd thinks that should have been flagged. Let's bring in Matt Austin. What do you think, Matt? Well, I think Todd's exactly right. He is not a defenseless player because he's not down yet. The hit came in. There was a little help with the helmet, but it wasn't crown. It was a little bit of the side of the helmet to the to the side of his. So he got his head out of the way. He did everything we asked him to do. Meanwhile, you have Bonaconda slow to get up and Skowski slow to get up. Two well, very important players. If a Bonaconda can't continue, Pitt would be without its leading rusher and receiver without a Bonaconda and Addison for the rest of this game. So we'll see if Pat Narduzzi elects to try a field goal. On fourth and ten, when we visited him yesterday, talked about how the field goal situation's a bit unsettled. Scarton is four for four, but he has missed two extra points. They've only tried four field goals all season. This will be the fifth from the red shirt sophomore. He's taken over from Alex Kessman, who was a terrific four-year kicker for Pittsburgh. And that one is good. He has an attraction to that left upright. <laughs> I think Mark Whipple's still aggravated about all those penalties that wound up bogging down the drive that ends in three. I knew this guy was good. <laughs> Matt said yesterday if it's a longer field goal they might try Ben Sauls who's their kickoff man. Well done by Scarton who had only attempted one in the last four games. Kickers are a rare breed that's for sure. Top ranked boxing tonight from Atlanta the main event Jamel Herring squares off against undefeated Shakur Stevenson for Herring's WBO junior lightweight belt. Main card starts at 10:30 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes in the app. And Sunday, the countdown crew gets you started for your NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Will Shipley on the kickoff return for Clemson? Rossier Dennis took him down. You can see why they're so excited about Will Shipley. I mean, he's got that burst. He did have the drop that would have been a touchdown. He was close to a couple long runs where he got tripped up. But you can see why they're excited about the future of this young running back. Very highly recruited. Dabo Sweeney, Tony Elliott. I think they're in really good shape at running back with Shipley, with another freshman, Phil Maffa, and with the sophomore, Kobe Pace. Still Tyson Pumachan on for the second series. Led him to a field goal as he replaced DJ Ui Ungalale on the previous possession. That's Kobe Pace ahead for three. Ui Ungalale 11 for 23 passing for 101 yards and two interceptions. The second on a shovel pass just gone wrong. Ui Ungalale also ran for 37 yards on six carries. Rubichon three out of five for 23 yards passing on the last run. And the pass incomplete for Bo Collins. Kind of short arm that catch, it seemed. Well, Sean, you mentioned DJ Uyunglele being benched. He's shown a lot of maturity since he's been sidelined. He's been in Tyson Pumachan's ear the entire time between uh, series. And he's been really encouraging, talking to him, speaking very closely with him. And coaches say they want to see more leadership out of DJ. And he's been very vocal on the sidelines. Final minute of this third quarter. Critical third down and seven for Clemson. Pumashan lost one up for grabs and incomplete. He's lucky it wasn't picked off by Eric Hallett. It was basically a punt yep. in the general direction of a Joe a Joe. Well, 
you know, that was not a good throw, really no chance of completing that one. The play before, though, and you kind of made reference to it, the receiver's got to help him out. I mean, Bo Collins short-armed that one across the middle. That would have been a conversion on second down, and they wouldn't even have to face that third down play. Well, Keith Stovall back for the Spires punt. Good kick. Stovall from his own 20. And he goes down right there. Well covered by Clemson. 48 yard punt. Jack Maddox is the long snapper. Save the tackle. Time for the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Well done, Todd. That was Todd, not a sound effect played from the truck. Pittsburgh has nine players in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Clemson has just one. Who is? Because it is. We were told Dan Marino is going to be here. We don't believe that he is. Boy has. Pitt had some great players. One of those going to their Hall of Fame today, the Pitt Hall of Fame, Curtis Martin. Jackie Sherrill, the coach. You played against Jackie Sherrill. Well, should we give the folks at home time to look it up on Google? The athletic trivia question. I guess they'll have to because it's the end of the third quarter and they're counting briskly in my ear. 24 10, Pittsburgh leads Clemson. Whatever first, let's answer the athletic trivia question. The one Clemson player who's in the Hall of Fame, the pro football version that is, Brian Dawkins. Great defensive back, 13 seasons with the Eagles, three with the Broncos, five All Pro seasons. Part of the Hall of Fame class of 2018. Todd Blackledge's town, the Canton, Ohio. Here's Rodney Hammond in a running back. There without a Banacanda. So Hammond gets his first carry of the day. And it's a good one for a first down, a gain of 18. Really nice balance again. Only 96 yards rushing for Pittsburgh in the game, but it's been timely running. And this is the time of the game in the fourth quarter with the lead where you really want to lean on that run. Hammond again. He's a freshman from Norfolk, Virginia. Molly. Sean Pitt will have to win this game without their lead wide receiver and running back. Israel Vanakanda is out and is in the locker room being evaluated for a concussion. And as I reported earlier, wide receiver Jordan Addison also being evaluated for a concussion. The two best skilled players around Kenny Pickett, who's having the kind of day that gets you even deeper in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. Hammond stacked up. He's 23 for 35 for 277 and two touchdowns. We asked him yesterday, are you thinking at all about the Heisman? He said no. I've been asked about it a couple times. Quite out to if you win tomorrow, you're probably going to be asked even more about it. He's 22 to 1 right now to win it in Vegas. At this time last year, <clears throat> excuse me, Devontae Smith was 60 to 1. And obviously wound up winning the Heisman, the Alabama wide receiver, Lucas Kroll. Pickett's parents are happy. His dad sure does look like a guy who was an All-American linebacker at Shippensburg. Mom Casey, a standout soccer player at Kutztown State. Uh, it, it's just been fun for me to watch Kenny Pickett this week on film and I'm watching him live here. You know, they, we did the game last year at Clemson. He was 22 of 39, 209 yards, four interceptions. And he said to Pat Narduzzi, right after the Virginia Tech game, this game, Clemson, this is why I came back, mm -hmm. to play in this game. That was after their game last week. Hammond looks to have another first down. And you know, Todd, in some ways, that loss and that really poor performance at Clemson last year, if you look at the run by Hammond, might have helped pick it. And Pittsburgh, because had he played better in that game, right. he probably would have gone to the NFL draft. That was such a bad game. It certainly helped his, uh, hurt his draft prospects. And it's a part of the reason that he decided to come back. Well, again, I think as a Heisman voter, for me, my main criterion is how do guys play in the biggest games? And this is the biggest game 
Kenny Pickett's played in. And how about Hammond off wow. the bench without a carry until this drive. He is leading them right down the field. Previous three possessions for Pitt against Brent Venable's defense. Touchdown, touchdown, and field goal. And at the very least, they're in field goal range again. We talked about the tight ends. Beautiful block on the end of the line by number seven, Lucas Kroll, and then a lead block by Gavin Bartholomew. This Clemson defense. 24 points, the most scored in regulation against Clemson this year. And of course, the penalty flag. <laughs> Holding offense number 57. Well, they've gotten just about everybody on the offensive line now. That's Gabe Hoy, the fifth year senior from. Pittsburgh, Upper St. Clair High School. Now they were in the tackle over, so he was actually lined up as the left tackle with Carter Warren lined up as the tight end and got beat on a quick first step and hooked the defender. That was a good call. They're back at the 25. They have a two touchdown lead and the clock is ticking here in the fourth quarter. Another flag down as Hammond goes across the 20. He's had runs on this drive that have counted of 18, 10, and 13 yards. Legal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty, still first down. Pat Narduzzi getting a little agitated with the officiating, but he's getting closer. To what he said would be a statement win for the Pitt football program in his seventh season. They're 47 and 35 under Narduzzi. And really, Todd, for the most part, they've won the games they're supposed to win. Correct. They don't win many. They're not supposed to win. They did lose one that still sticks in their craw this year. They're only lost to Western Michigan. Kenny Pickett told us, I don't think I'll ever get over that. Vincent Davis for two. They turned it over three times in yeah. that game and were stopped twice on fourth down. But they really believe, and Pat Narduzzi said it, we should be undefeated right now. Yeah. But in the other part of that, the other side of that same point, is it was kind of a wake up call for the players and realizing that you know, we've got to focus on the details every day in practice, get better every day, and they've been better since then. Pick it on target. Shockey Jacques Louis. Stays on his feet, finally stacked up at the 17, perhaps the 16 yard line. You know, it's interesting when we talked to Kenny Pickett, we asked him about his decision to come back. He talked to his family, talked to coaches, talked to Peyton Manning. The other thing that he mentioned was not just the advice he got, but he knew the talent that Pitt had coming back. And he knew he was going to be surrounded by better talent and weapons than he was at any point in his career. And that was exciting for him as well. And Mark Whipple told him, if you come back, you have a chance to be an all-time great at Pitt. You'll be in the Pittsburgh Hall of Fame. You'll bring your kids here someday and be recognized as such. He throws behind Stovall. And they'll send the field goal team out to try to get ahead by three scores for the first time today with nine and a half to go. Sam Scarton, one for one today. Got a mulligan on a missed extra point on a Clemson offside penalty. And made it on the second try. Made it from 44 in the third quarter. This is from 34, the right hash mark. The punter, Chris Dudu, is the holder, and that's good. They're starting to feel it on that Pittsburgh sideline. Nine and a half to go, and the Panthers are up by 17. A history making day for Kenny Pickard, who passed Alex Van Pelt for most career completions in Pittsburgh history. Will Shipley brings the kickoff across the 25, and we send you back to Matt Berry. Hello, Sean. Happy second half catching you up on things going around the country, including at the Rose Bowl. Oregon starting to look like the better team against UCLA 27-17. That one 
headed to the fourth quarter. Have an entertaining game between Iowa State and Oklahoma State. This moment to go, Spencer Sander to Tay Martin. Watch the grab. Pokes grab the league back, 21-17. Not surprising that that's been a terrific game. DJ Uyunglele is back in now. First appearance since he turned it over with an errant shovel pass that was intercepted return for quarter. To Justin Ross. Panther territory to the 45 yard line. Brandon Hill made the tackle. They'll go quickly to the line of scrimmage. Really nice job by Will Shipley picking up the block, the blitz by Servasier Dennis, allowing his quarterback to step up in the pocket and deliver the ball. 27 yard gain, nine minutes to go. They're down by three scores. Threw it up for grabs for Dakari Collins, who was covered by Damari Mathis. First time they've thrown it in the direction of Dakari Collins. Pumachan back on the bench. He went three for seven, passing for 23 yards. He rushed twice for 15. Obviously, Pumachan didn't get nearly as many reps in practice and preparation for this game. And now with a throw-only mentality for Clemson, they went with their starting quarterback again. Under the lay. Flag comes flying in at the end of the play, intended for a Joe, a Joe. There were a couple Clemson receivers in the same area. It looked kind of confusing offensively and defensively on that play. I'd be curious to see what they end up calling. It looked like it was a miscommunication by some Clemson receivers in the same area. Pass interference, defense, number 38. Finley's an automatic first down. Spot the foul. Cam Bright, linebacker, called for the penalty. Cam Bright working over the slot. He pushed the receiver down, and there, <laughs> when he hit a Joe, the first one was okay because the ball was not thrown. The second one was a penalty because the ball was in the air. Got his money. Anything in his area. <laughs> That's eight pit penalties for 77 yards. Clemson flagged four times. Bowie under the lay. Too high. And another flag on the play. And another pit penalty. This is going to be defensive holding. I think they're going to get Demar Mathis. Defense number 21. Holding an eligible receiver. Pass across the line of scrimmage. Ten-yard penalty and a first down. Again, th this coverage that Pitt plays, they are going to get their hands on you. They're going to push and grab. And a lot of times it depends how they're calling the game as to how successful they're going to be on pass defense. Nine penalties now against the Panthers. Helping this drive along. Clemson moving quickly. Louis Younger the lay out of bounds. Far sideline inside the 20. <laughs> Seeing some different faces out here too for Clemson. Well, they're playing without their starting left guard, Matt Bockhorst. He's been replaced by 74 Marcus Tate, the freshman who has played guard or tackle. Bockhorst on the sideline, right knee injury. Will Shipley once again just barely tripped up when it looked like he might get more. Cam Bright. Might have saved the touchdown. They're on the six yard line. And going quickly as we approach eight minutes to go and Pitt leading 27 to 10. Great keep by Uyungle Everybody in blue thought he had handed the ball off. And good for benched. He has the right response. It's a six yard touchdown run. Five plays, 72 yards. And watch this guy, this block. This, this is number nine, Jake Brenningstool. He's not even on our boards. He's somewhere down the depth chart on tight end. He's in there, this possession gets a nice block and a nice play fake by DJ for the touchdown. BT Potter. 
drive took just a minute and 34 seconds. Three hit penalties on that drive helped the Tigers cause for driven. Pittsburgh lined up anticipating an onside kick. I, I don't think you onside kick it here. They do kick it deep. DT Potter to be a Football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A. They're going to change dramatically when they show we show them to you next week. Georgia Idol, Cincinnati had a tough time at Navy, as did Oklahoma at Kansas. And the shocker, Penn State loses in nine overtimes at home against Illinois. Michigan State off this week, number nine. Michigan, a big win at home. Those two will square off next week in East Lansing. A battle of undefeated to the Big Ten East. That's going to be one way over the football game. Eddie Pickett comes out throwing with a 10 point lead under eight to go, and it's off the hands of Melky Stovall. Trying to protect the lead, run out the clock. They did that very effectively last week at Virginia Tech. In fact, Pickett threw only one pass in the fourth quarter last week yeah. because they were able to run the ball and run the game out. Actually, they had a drive that lasted 11 minutes and 38 seconds. They didn't score, but they held the ball for almost the entire quarter. They don't have their leading rusher, Israel Abanacanda, nor do they have their leading receiver. Jordan Addison, both in the concussion protocol. Vincent Davis tackled by fellow number 22, Trenton Simpson. Clemson could get the ball back very quickly here, having scored in just more than a minute and a half on their last possession. Well, the thing you really want to avoid here if you're Kenny Pickett is a turnover. He's played turnover free today. They did have the one fumble by Lucas Kroll after a catch. It was five turnovers last year in Death Valley that really were the difference in the ball game. Got to take care of the football. He has plenty of time. Now takes off running. Needs the 35. Dives for it. And will wait for the mark. First down. What Nolan effort. Turner went launching for him. They were like two missiles, and Pickett just did get it. When he scrambles to his right, he throws more than he runs. When he scrambles to his left, he runs more than he throws. And this is just heroic individual effort to extend the ball past the marker with Nolan Turner in hot pursuit. Well, he showed you the quote at the beginning of the telecast. Pickett says you have to play with an edge, and he does. Great pocket presence, excellent scrambler. Rodney Hammond, who's been key here in the fourth quarter, Nine. who's seen very little action, more than half of his 32 carries this season entering today were in their route of New Hampshire when they won 77 to 7. Every one of those first downs, like Kenny Pickett just picked up, just eats more clock off the, you know, more time off the clock. Mark Whipple knows that, Kenny Pickett knows it, and so does Dabo Sweeney. We go back to the conversation about they don't signal the plays in. We asked Pickett, do you ever get tired? He said, yeah, sometimes I look at the GPS monitor at the end of the game, see how much running I did. Mark Whipple, who spent a lot of time in the NFL, believes they should go to the NFL system where the play caller can communicate right into the helmet of these college quarterbacks. One of the reasons he said he does it because teams try to steal the offensive signals and Clemson's been alleged to be very good at that by opponents they have played throughout the years. Timeout 540 to go pit by 10. ABC Ohio State and Indiana. So here's third and two for Pittsburgh protecting a 10 point lead. On the previous two third downs on this drive, both converted. They've both been run by Kenny Pickett, the quarterback. This time he handed it off. Vincent Davis gets the first down. Thrown down by Jalen Phillips. But it goes to the 39, a gain of six. And they continue to run out the clock. Four minutes to go. Here was the dive where he beat Nolan Turner, the first third down conversion. 
It was the design quarterback run, and then the last time he gave it to Vincent Davis. And you know, normally when you see a quarterback whose uniform looks like this, you think he must have had a miserable day, getting sacked, getting thrown around. Not Kenny Pickett. He's got a dirty uniform because of the way he plays the game and the way he's willing to run the football. Davis straight ahead. Clemson has just one timeout left. And they'll use it right here with 325 to go. Come out. Clemson. Third. Final charge timeout. Look at Kenny. He wants the whole offense to come over for this last timeout. The last instructions. What well, is let's take a look at the day for Kenny Pickett from start to finish. Well, again, just reading the field, finding the matchups. He's got a lot of weapons. Jordan Addison, his favorite target, played well early with that touchdown, and he had to leave the game. This was the touchdown to J.C. or Mack. Again, finding the right matchups, and then when his team needed it, the tough runs. And that, that's the leadership and the personality and the edge that he plays with that makes guys around him want to play with him and play for him. I think he'd be in favor of the yeah, coaches so. being able to speak into the helmet. Rodney Hammond. Speaking of which, what a great week plus it's going to be for the Whipple family if this goes the way it appears it will. Mark Whipple, we talked the other day, so proud of his son Spence, who's the assistant wide receiver coach for the Arizona Cardinals. You may remember that last week the Cardinals trying to stay undefeated went to Cleveland. Cliff Kingsbury the head coach also the play caller unable to go because of COVID. So they put Spence Whipple who never called plays before in the NFL in charge. He had to learn how to use the coach to quarterback communication system. And what a job he did. As they scored 37 points in Cleveland in a 37 to 14 win. Coach for his dad at UMass, and his dad is a terrific football coach, as we've seen again here today. Won a national championship at UMass as the head coach back in 1998, and now perhaps frustration for Clemson. Justin Maskell being screamed at by Dabo Sweeney. After the play, it's forced like conduct in the seven to be Kenny Pickett is signaling for victory formation now. Here's the end of the play. Yeah, hard to see what happened with Pascal. Dabo Sweeney certainly saw it, it was right on their sideline. Now with a first down, Pitt may just take the knee. Now he did the little talk and the taunt, but he can't take the helmet off either. So timeout. Yeah. Pittsburgh, second charge timeout. Timeout will be 30 seconds. Well, uncharacteristic of Clemson. Yeah. They're losing their poise hurting themselves and you can understand the frustration for Dabo Sweeney really again more the same early in the game they have a lead looks like they're going to uh, score again on a long pass to Will Shipley wide open it's going to be a touchdown right. he drops it and the offense still cannot get out of its own way they're yeah. going to score uh, fewer than 21 points again today for the fifth straight game 21 or fewer yeah and you, you know he told us that we got a defense that keeps us in every game but you just can't be that unbalanced you have to have more help from your offense and they haven't had that and they also are facing the best quarterback and the best offense that they've seen all season they were able to get away with it with some of the teams on their schedule but not this Pitt Panther offensive football team led by Kenny Pickett so it's five straight games scoring 21 or fewer the longest such streak for Clemson since 1994 when they were held to 21 or fewer in six consecutive games it's going to be their first double digit loss to a conference opponent since 2014 a loss to Georgia Tech as we mentioned they hadn't lost more than one game in any of the previous 
regular seasons. They will have lost three in this season. The only losses 2015 to 2020 in the regular season to Pittsburgh on a walk off field goal in Clemson 2016 to Syracuse in 2017 and to Notre Dame at Notre Dame in that epic game last year. And once again what Pitt has been able to do to close this out is just hold the football. They've had it for over four minutes here at the end of the game converting third downs and keeping the ball away from Clemson and now the kneel down to run this thing out. On what Pat Narduzzi described as a statement win. Trying to elevate this great program with such a awesome history that was on display fully here today on Hall of Fame weekend. And he has it. They go to six and one overall. They'll keep moving up. And statistically, in the college football playoff predictor by Allstate, they have the best chance of any ACC team to be included in the college football playoff. Pickett 25 for 39 for 302 and two touchdowns. Run. Kenny, you told me the key to winning big games is wanting it more than they do. After your last two performances, throw and catch Presley, big one. And I thought whichever quarterback played better in this game would be a team that had a chance to win. Great throw by Sanders and an even better catch by Presley had six catches for 84 You're yards. You're wondering if the Oklahoma State defense can hold. Here's Xavier Hutchinson, nine-yard TD. Yeah, toe tap, great pass, great catch. Back and forth we go. Sanders to Tay Martin. Pokes regain the lead in the fourth quarter. And this is one of the better catches you'll see all day. Keeps the this looks incomplete at first look, but they took another look and it's a touchdown. All right, so late fourth quarter, Oklahoma State up 21-17. Uh, uh, Iowa State drives all the way down. Bryce Hall ends it with a touchdown. And then fourth and two for the win. Ah. Ah, what an effort. Yeah, I told you these games are always close. Now six out of the last seven have been one possession games. Oklahoma State usually wins. Now, Iowa State got the dub. And don't look now, but Iowa State, everybody's preseason darling in the Big 12. I know they have two losses, but they are 3-1 and one in conference play. They get to win 24-21. Sam Acho, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry alongside. What an afternoon we had of football. We always talk about this in these, game, these weeks where there aren't any really star-studded matchups. You get something that catches your attention. That certainly happened in the noon window with Oklahoma and Kansas. We didn't know how this thing was going to end after it started. Oklahoma, huge favorites in this one. Let's just pick it up fourth quarter, first and goal. Oklahoma trailing. Kennedy Brooks gives him the first lead of the game. And it was a run game of Oklahoma in the second half that took over this game. And then Stephen McBride trying to break a tackle. How about the Oklahoma defense stripping the ball? Yeah, that's called a takeaway, not a turnover. He took the ball away from the offensive player. Caleb Williams having a hard time getting in rhythm early. It seemed when they started running him, he started making plays. This was fourth and three, and it went for 40. Yeah, and Oklahoma say this is a great play by Caleb Williams, but I guarantee you Kansas is thinking that's terrible tackle. Here comes Rock Chalk. Jason Bean to Luke Grimm. They're not done yet. Yeah, speaking of terrible, terrible defense by Oklahoma. Play of the day, maybe the season for Oklahoma. Fourth and one, Kennedy Brooks stopped until Caleb takes the ball from him. And I still think the whistle should have blown. Kennedy Brooks is going backwards. He stopped. Defense is pushing him back. Where's the whistle, Otto? What a heady play by the true Great freshman. play. Whistle should have blown. Oklahoma pulled away late, 35-23. 3-0 now when trailing in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati needs style points. Navy's not a good football team this year. You'd think they'd route them. Josh Wiley, three-yard touchdown of 27-10. Then Ty Lavatai punches it in. Navy stayed in this fight. Yeah, Navy stayed in the fight, and even after this touchdown, they recovered the onside kick. Here it is. Watch the execution on this. Just like a good that's the way you draw it up in practice, right? When, you, when we practice onside kicks in practice, that's what that's they look exactly like. But they never go like. that way. Well, not in the they, game. They, they never go that way. Uh, Cincinnati survives. Fewest yards on offense since week 13, 2019. Game of the day, Illinois, Penn State. Was it? All right, we're going to coin toss in overtime. Third overtime. Penn State a chance to win it right here. Throw back to Sean Clifford. Uh, 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 that play always is open. I know. <laughs> Fourth overtime play. now. Arthur Sikowski rolling up. Throw, throw it. it. Throw, throw, throw. This, throw. Uh, so, game of the day, huh? It was, well, yeah, it's ugly. 
for the, the historical aspect of it. Execution-wise, uh, Sitkowski got hurt. He would leave. We're in the eighth overtime. Isaiah go. Williams scores. So now Penn State has to score or they're done. Noah Kane ties it. Now, you're saying, how, why is the score like this? These are two-point conversions. New overtime rules. Brandon Peters in. Casey Washington win. Number seven goes down. Penn State didn't play well all day. They gave up over 300 yards rushing. Usually only gave up about 100, over 100. It was bad. How about nine overtimes? I couldn't combine game for 40 of the day, points. 20 to 18. Here what, we what, go. It was the game of the day. You know, your negativity right now is not helping Brian Robinson Jr. I had to sit through that. Who's stretching and getting ready for Tennessee. Alabama was in bounce back mode a week ago against Mississippi State. Gentlemen, here's what I'll say about Tennessee this season. Josh Heupel lost everybody to the transfer portal, comes in. What is he going to do with Rocky Top? He's got them playing well. What can the volunteers do at Alabama early on and maybe shake the tide? Well, of course, you get excited about Josh Heupel's offense, but this is more about Alabama. They're playing with their hair on fire. After that loss to AM, it seems like they've been rejuvenated. It seems like a sleeping giant has been awoken. And Tennessee's gotten better at hitting the deep ball. And if they got a chance in this game, they better hit the deep ball because Alabama's going to score a lot. Right, I believe you're two and zero on predictions today. You're one and one. Before we toss to the game, give me your prediction. I'm going to ask for a score for this one. Alabama, thirty-seven to twenty. Fifty-six twenty, Alabama. Fifty-six twenty. Fifty-six twenty. Write it down. Lock it in. We'll see if that holds on college football final. See you at the half. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. You know, the question is, is can this become a part of who we are or does something bad have to happen for us to respond in the way we need to respond? People at the university expect us to compete at a certain level. You know, we call it the Bama standard. You know, if we continue to play like we played in the last game, I think that we can develop a really positive identity. Yeah, we're all finding out together who Alabama is, but it looked like the Crimson Tide solved some of their questions last week in that win against Mississippi State. As we welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway. A lot has changed about this rivalry. It's no longer always the third Saturday in October. They no longer play the Alabama home games in Birmingham like they did for years. But Tennessee doesn't win anymore. It's been 14 straight Alabama victories in this series. Jason Benetti, Greg McElroy, Katie George is downstairs. Tennessee stopped winning when you got here, first of all. Uh, but look, Bryce Young and Alabama are taking the field. Where is this offense right now? They're in a great spot. They're running the football more efficiently. The offensive line is coming together. But the straw that stirs the drink, as it's been all year, has been Bryce Young. The young quarterback has been exceptionally poised. He's been exceptionally accurate. And is in the driver's seat, according to many, for the Heisman Trophy. What makes him special, though, is he's mature beyond his years. The poise is absolutely off the charts, and the recognition of pressure. Some most quarterbacks, young quarterbacks, overload the protection, they get absolutely rattled. Not Bryce Young. Six guys rushing the quarterback, five blockers. So he's overloaded. He knows he's got to lose it. He does. The guy that he loses it to is Brian Robinson, and he's out the gate for a touchdown. This young man has done a great job taking advantage of the opposing defense, trying to take advantage of his youth and inexperience. The poise is off the charts, the accuracy is off the charts, and the recognition of pressure is something you don't see from a guy that's only in his second year. Highly impressive, isn't he, Katie George? He really is, and he's as humble as they come, guys. So getting him to talk about his strengths can be a struggle. But he did say he felt like he made progress last week, recognizing when to stay in the pocket and when to extend plays. He said, when I've got guys downfield, I've got to go through my reads. But if there's green grass, I also need to take it. He hopes to build on that progress here tonight against Tennessee, a group that had trouble containing the quarterback last Saturday. They did against Matt Corral. We'll find out who's playing quarterback for Tennessee when we come back. It's the balls and the Crimson Tide next. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. Mm. 
and strawberries, blueberries, and the cherry on top. Fairly 50% more. Scrumptious into scrumptious. Fair life. Ultra filtered milk. <laughs> pre-treat my laundry? Nope. With Tide Pods, you don't need to worry. The pre-treaters are built in. Tide Pods dissolve even when the water is freezing. Nice. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. Wow, it really turned out great. Yeah, and with the money we saved with Navy Federal Credit Union, it was practically free. You know, I can't imagine where we'd be without them. <laughs> Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Peloton, come on, let's get this workout started. Heart rate stays up. We're moving to the mat. Let's go, Peloton. Bring that thunder. As you rotate, exhale. We did it together, Peloton. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Soak it in, Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Great teams have had big trouble today. Greg McElroy will find out if Tennessee can provide resistance for Alabama. We saw Penn State go down. We saw Oklahoma State go down. We'll see if there's trouble in Tuscaloosa. And this Tennessee team has really made progress the last few weeks. The big plays have started to come. And if they can create some big play opportunities against a defense that has had their fair share of ups and downs, this could get testy here in Tuscaloosa. Off we go. Tennessee will have it at the 25-yard line. Hendon Hooker in to play quarterback for Tennessee, Katie George. Yeah, Jason, and there was certainly some concern throughout the week based on Hendon's availability, but Josh Heifel told me on Sunday he moved around a decent amount, which was a good sign, and then that movement just progressed throughout the week. And what a difference six days make, guys. Check this out. During warm-ups, he was doing his best Odell Beckham Jr. impression in the back of the end zone. I asked him how he's feeling. He said, I am all good. He didn't have to say that to you. If he's jumping like that. <laughs> I would say picture's worth a thousand words. And I'd be willing to say that he looked pretty good. Really fortunate, too, because it looked scary last week. And he's been a big reason for why Tennessee's moving in the right direction offensively. On first down, it is a run. It's Jabari Small, the sophomore out of Memphis. If you haven't seen Tennessee play, you're going to see about three plays a minute. They play very fast. First pass, Bayless Jones Jr. on the outside. They love getting him the ball quickly, and it'll be third down and short. They're getting him started, getting him involved early, but a critical third down because they really start to hit their tempo after they pick up that initial first down in the offensive drive. These are both fantastic third down converting teams. 50% or better, both of them. And that's going nowhere. And Mathis. And with pressure off the left, you're just going to see Bama guys work across the Tennessee offensive lineman's face. Just an excellent job there by the Alabama defensive line. Byron Young was the first guy to arrive, but D.J. Dale was right there in the middle of that defense. It's an excellent job on third and short. So Alabama won the toss, deferred, and now gets the ball within a minute and a half as that punt from Paxton Brooks is a good one. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. And for Alabama on offense, of course, 
so many playmakers. Tough to pick just two. Brian Robinson's been a great presence between the tackles and on the perimeter. Running back Jamison Williams, the transfer from Ohio State. So much speed, that vertical speed, but has done a great job with the ball in his hands. And then defensively for Tennessee, Theo Jackson, extremely, extremely productive. He'll be in the nickel, going to be very important for him. And then along the front, they're going to have to be excellent with Byron Young presenting some pressure to the right side of that Alabama offensive line. First play from scrimmage for the Crimson Tide tonight. Young to throw quickly out of his hand and dropped by Jamison Williams. As you can see, trying to get one of the impact players involved early. Ball thrown early there. Good anticipation from Bryce Young. And as Jamison Williams gets his head around, just can't locate the ball quick enough and it results in an incompletion. These Alabama receivers are so good after the catch. Might have been thinking about turning it upfield at second down. Right back into his hand. Jamison Williams on the outside, and he is clipped. Very short run for Jamison Williams, and that's Hatton on the outside of the stop. You see Bryce Young, not the biggest guy in the world, but extremely accurate, very decisive, and for a young player, does a really good job when he breaks contain, when he gets outside the pocket, remaining in a passing posture. That's when the big plays happen. Passing posture, meaning? Meaning always ready to throw, regardless of whether or not he's on the move. Bolden in motion, third down and seven. Young does have the connection right at the stick. And they will give the first down, it looks like, to Latu, the tight end. Great job there by Latu, understanding how far it was to pick up the first down. A lot of times, receivers and tight ends, in an effort to make sure they get open faster, they cut their route a little short. That time, he got all the depth needed for the first down. It was a good throw by Bryce Young. Brian Robinson Jr. has seen a ton of touches the last three weeks, nearly 30 a game. And this is a guy who had 274 carries coming into this season. He's at 117. Now he waited his turn. He had some great ones around him, but he's transformed his body and has become more versatile at running back as opposed to just being the power downhill runner that he was the last few seasons. Local product from here in Tuscaloosa, Hillcrest High School, about 15 minutes south of the stadium as Theo Jackson, one of your impact players, got in third down. Good job there by Theo Jackson. Very instinctive player. And this Tennessee defense, they're going to be challenged tonight. Alabama throws a lot of looks at you. It's going to be imperative that the front four for Tennessee, particularly the defensive tackles, are very stout against the run because these linebackers Secondary defenders are going to see an awful lot of different formations from Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator. Young on third down. Loads of time for Young. And he threw him open. Billingsley over the shoulder, first down. Khalil Billingsley is down after that catch. Such an important weapon for Alabama. He is, and hopefully he's okay. It looks like he's grabbing at his right arm. Landed kind of awkwardly as he made the back shoulder catch. We'll step aside as they check on Billingsley. Opening drive for Alabama. First down when we come back. Jeremiah energy is everything. I was like, somebody needs to see this awesomeness I get every time I go to Chick-fil-A. She said, can I record you? I was like, of course. <laughs> thank you have an awesome you. day up ahead. Thank all right, you thank you. Chick-fil-A. The next thing you know, it was like, boom. People that never even been to Wilmington that wanted to come to Chick-fil-A to meet Jeremiah. I always have my uh, like mindset, like I'm on a mission. I'm here to make today the best day ever. You definitely have to experience him serving you with a purpose. Love. Mark this moment in time and celebrate every kiss. 
Get zero down special financing with the K Jewelers credit card. Coach Prime. I think you got what it takes to wear the Aflac. At style, charisma, and a smile, there's 21 out of 10. Aflac. You know Aflac can help keep unexpected health care costs from ruining someone's finances. Check out this coverage. You still got Aflac. it, Coach. You still got it. Aflac. You never lost it. Yeah. Aflac. You see that coverage? With that wingspan, I see why you got more rings than a cell phone. There's always room for one more. Yeah. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Aflac. Is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. This wasn't no bear. It was like a bear squatch. Dad, what's a bear squatch? It's a cross between a bear and a sass. It's, it's made up. He's usually sleeping. He'll never sleep again. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. You deserve a better credit score. Whoa. Chime can help no matter where you're at. Whoa. Because with everyday purchases and on-time payments, Whoa. things can happen a lot easier. Whoa. Deserve some credit. Whoa. Get started at Chime.com. Is someone trying to steal your Butterfinger? Call the BFI. No one lays a finger on your Butterfinger. Saturday Night Football next week presented by Capital One back in the Big Ten it is Penn State now needing a bounce back taking on Ohio State and if that goes longer than today's Penn State game that would be a shock after nine overtimes earlier Billingsley goes out after getting spiked down in this catch and you see him as he's going to the ground put that right arm out try to brace himself as he's about to make contact with the ground and as he's walking to the sideline you see the trainers kind of holding that arm stable so we'll keep an eye on that but big big problem if he's unavailable because he was a big part of the game plan it sounded like for Bill O'Brien when talking to him this week playing time was building for the end of last year and this out of the backfield is Roy Dell Williams Tennessee was there on the flank Alante Taylor playing corner for Tennessee after an injury sets up second down and long this Tennessee defense while well, the offense has garnered an awful lot of praise understandably so too they're a high flying group or at least they were the last few weeks this defense has made some strides too they've been much better in the front seven than anticipated and Alante Taylor on the perimeter leads what is a very physical secondary. Yeah that defense in the second half last week against Ole Miss kept them in the ball game. Young to throw on second down to the outside and Bolden who tiptoes down the edge Tennessee's coaching staff is pointing at the sideline where they think the shoe was for Bolden. And they'll look at that. Good job by Bryce Young getting to his outlet as he got through his progression. A good job too by the protection of Roy Dell Williams picking up Banks during the internal pressure. And let's take a peek. Ooh, that left foot did look like it was a little bit closer. Yeah, he might have gotten a bonus yard or two there. Not much. Opening drive tonight for Alabama third down and six for Young. Time again with some touch first down Jamison Williams across the 40 Alabama three for three on third down as a marker has come in at the end of the play. Personal foul and they go hands to the face defense number nine. It's a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run with an automatic first down. Tyler Barron, the defensive lineman. You're going to see Barron as he's working. You'll see that hand to the face mask right there on the right side of your screen. Working against Brian Robinson, who's in protection. Really nice throw there. And unfortunate there for Tennessee. The pass rush was almost home, but Jamison Williams makes a play for the conversion. Robinson. More pressure in the defensive backfield. Tennessee has gotten in there. That was Trayvon Flowers, the safety, who was in first that time. 
against Alabama, you're going to give up some yards, especially on first and second down. You're going to give up some yards between the 20s. They just have so much talent. But the way you can make them more human is when the field condenses, and they can't use that speed to their advantage. So in this part of the field, this is where Tennessee is going to have to play at their very best because red zone defense is of the utmost importance when you're playing a team that's as talented as Alabama. It's a couple of red zone misses all year. Bryce Young could have had an entire kettle of tea as Tennessee gave him a lot of room to roam. Young tracing through the defense, first down and goal. As you can see his parents looking on, loving what they see. And Bryce Young here, three-man rush from Tennessee. Just three guys, so he knows he has forever. He can buy some time. This is pretty special right here. Hey, ball in his hands, makes a guy miss. And turning what was a negative play into a positive play really quickly. He is past first, but when there's a running lane, he takes it, as does Robinson for the touchdown. Look, there's been a lot of talk about should Bryce Young run more? Should he use his feet more? He has always been, even going back to youth football, the guy who wants to pass first and not take what he thought when he was young as the easy way out to run the ball. He had it, he took it, and he set up an Alabama touchdown on a 12-play drive after the defense got him the ball quickly. Impressive stuff from the tie. 7-0 Alabama. Subway has so much new, it didn't fit in the last ad. Like the new app with customization, curbside pickup, and delivery. There's so much new, we don't even have time to show you who's holding this phone. I bet you don't treat Brady this way. Come on, man. You clearly haven't seen the other ad. It's the eFresh refresh at Subway. In 2016, I was working at the Amazon warehouse when my brother passed away, and a couple of years later, my mother passed away. After taking care of them, I knew that I really wanted to become a nurse. Amazon helped me with the training and tuition. Today, I'm a medical assistant, and I'm studying to become a registered nurse. Hindi ko kayo makakalimutan. This is called momentum. And there's no off season, just work that builds on itself over and over and over again. Because the only way is through. Today tastes like a new tradition, like an old favorite. Tastes like all hands on deck. <laughs> and all eyes on the prize. Today tastes like a piece of the action. <laughs> and it never tasted this good. What is this? Is that a hairball? Mm. They're everywhere. We have a cat problem. Gentlemen, the Heisman House is getting a dog. Go show those cats who's boss. Well, that didn't work out well. Boogie's on your sixth limo. They need customized car insurance from Liberty Mutual, so they only pay for what they need. We are not getting you a helicopter. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Stop dreaming. With Rocket Mortgage, you can use your home's equity and make that renovation a reality. When you're ready to turn your home into your dream home, Rocket can. Rocket. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need.
This is a long standing rivalry, a great rivalry, and some of the wonderful program covers, old school face masks. We got everything here. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, look, this rivalry has been so streaky, though. You know it. I, 14 straight for Alabama. Right before that, Tennessee had won 10 of 12. And I will say they've now outscored the first Tennessee win in the series back in 1904. It was five to nothing. Falling. Figure. Couple CNI pinch hits in, yeah. that, in that first game between the two. There was a great sack fly in the seventh. <laughs> 25 yard line for Tennessee into the studio Matt Perry. Good evening gentlemen happy SEC Saturday this just wrapped up at the Rose Bowl Ethan Garbers in DTR was hurt was moving UCLA down until he was picked off by DJ James Oregon survives 34 31. How about Walton on game day I thought it was going to be like 1245 Eastern when they finally got it to the game <laughs> direct to receiver Dorian Thompson Robinson. Uh, <laughs> 7-0 Alabama, Tennessee needs a first down here, wouldn't you say? Very much. Out of the backfield, Jabari Small, and he is very close to the line to gain. Josh Heupel in his first season at Tennessee. And look, he's trying to rebuild this program that's been through five coaches in the last decade and a half. He's done a great job. I mean, it was a difficult circumstance that he walked into. Thin roster, guys leaving into the portal. He's got them together now, and the offensive culture is being established. This is small, and he has wrestled back. Will Anderson, Jr., who absolutely exploded last week, was not going to let him at the line of game. You referenced it a second ago. This Tennessee offensive line not at 100%. Running it between the tackles is going to be very difficult. Third and one, Hendon Hooker pops it over the top for Small down the sideline. And Hendon Hooker roaming okay. He got hit pretty well that time, Greg. Yeah, he did. That was a great job of making the defender commit. Watch him make the defender come up. Ooh, be careful there if you're Malachi Moore. This is incomplete. Yeah, he did launch a little bit with the Ooh. shoulder. Didn't make the forcible contact to the head as it's second down for a hooker in Tennessee. Malachi Moore got tossed early in the Texas A&M game and that was a huge turning point in the game that time he did have the upward thrust but he missed fortunately for Alabama but that was a great job by Hooker bringing the defender in. Long ball down the sideline from Hooker and he's got it to Cedric Tillman for a first down and a huge game. Gain of 39 for Tennessee, first and 10 from the 11. Hooker, end zone incomplete for Fant, the tight end. And let's go back to that big play, working these slot go balls. And this time, he gets Tillman behind the defense, ball slightly underthrown, a better throw is a touchdown as he got behind Daniel Wright, but a great job by Tillman, high point in the football and making the catch. The rare long ball hit this year, for Tennessee as this is Tyon Evans back from the ankle injury there have been a lot of misses downfield for Tennessee that can change the game if they can hit on those absolutely it's left so many plays on the field in the first few games but that's been why the offense has come alive those long balls have started to connect third and seven Hendon Hooker down the middle for a touchdown, Tennessee and Bayless Jones. Great answer from the Tennessee Volunteers. We might have a game here tonight in Tuscaloosa. Some spunk from Tennessee. Bayless Jones finds a perfect matchup. He has the safety outside. He breaks it in. Hendon Hooker finds him. And the Volunteers have life here in Tuscaloosa.
ESPN+. Plus. Welcome to Allstate, where we have all new lower auto rates And savings like that make you feel like you won the whole dang thing. Now get new lower auto rates with Allstate. Because better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. Today's challenge, three toppings for just 10 bucks. Mine has ham, pineapple, and bacon. You just took me on a trip. Am I a pineapple person now? I'm a pineapple person now. Create yours only at Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled into other stuff. But I want my wrapper to be a hang glider. How about a park bench? Dad. You need to think bigger. Recycle your specially marked Crunchy Bar wrappers in store now. The leap of faith. Some hesitate, but not you. You don't ask what if. You embrace what's next with open arms. You don't question your decision. You double down. Because you know the thrill is worth it. Introducing the 2022 Telluride Nightfall Edition. Here in California, we believe in what if. After all, if is our middle name. What if we get up the moon? And the stars. Here we welcome all what ifs with open arms. After all, there's only one wrong way to what if. What if you don't? The hottie sauce is here. Get my new hottie sauce at Popeye's today. I got this mountain bike. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Get 2,000 purchase cash on 2021 Sierra Light Duty Crew Cab models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get an additional 250 purchase allowance. Gas station approaching. Can we make it on one tank? Running probabilities. Dad? Guys, I filled the pickup truck with Amoco Ultimate. We'll go up to 25 miles further per tank and highway driving them with regular fuel. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it! Right. Up to 25 miles further per tank with Amico Ultimate. Available at BP and Amico stations. And you could get five cents off every gallon with BP Me Rewards. We're back in Tuscaloosa where the Vols just tied it up at seven apiece and head coach Dick Saban was unhappy with the coverage on that last touchdown. He beelined over to the defense on the sideline here for Alabama. He exchanged words with Malachi Moore as well as Jordan Battle. It got heated, but then he ended by applauding them, asking them to refocus and get back in the coverage. I will show you in just a second after this kick because it was really poor alignment from Alabama. Davidson Williams back to receive. How poor of alignment. Oh. When you have outside leverage of a wide receiver, there has to be someone in the middle. Unfortunately for Alabama, there's nobody in the middle. So where does Tennessee work? That vacated area. If you have outside leverage, that means there has to be someone that you're funneling the receiver into. That time, no one there for Alabama. Easy pitch and catch from Hendon Hooker. And a great drive and a response from Tennessee taking advantage of the misalignment of Alabama. That's the tempo. That's what tempo can do. It can get you out of alignment. You can get some cheap ones. It's exactly what Tennessee took advantage of there. Nick Saban talked about the rhythm that he feels like football players get into and how that tempo breaks the rhythm. And an open look for the touchdown as Alabama gets it back for its second drive of the ball game. Robinson. Spike down after a short gain, just a couple of yards. Young man who, again, the amount of carries has grown in a major way, but he was a star here in Tuscaloosa. 447 yards in one game at Hillcrest High School down the road a piece, and he's been a major part of this offense last couple of weeks. Very much so, and 
A lot of people wondering if he would be the bell cow that he's turned into. And man, has he answered the challenge. Young climb to the pocket, spits it out. He has a lot to the tight end across midfield. And a first down, Alabama. Now Latu's down, so Billingsley already out. Latu is injured for Alabama. Two tight ends in the first nine and change in this game have gone down. They do expect Billingsley to come back at some point tonight as they check on Latu. I want you to watch the linebacker here Aaron Beasley he's lined up right here his eyes after he collisions the tight end out his eyes go to the back watch him get the collision he bangs him and then he comes back and look Bryce Young attacks the line of scrimmage which buys Beasley towards the quarterback thinking he's about to clean the quarterback's clock boom Bryce Young spits it out to the tight end with a lot of green grass just excellent job there by the quarterback but hopefully Latu can be okay he has been huge as an end man on the line of scrimmage, not just receiving the football, Jason, but also providing necessary protection on the edges when the tackles are struggling. Well, there's good news right there, Greg, with Billingsley back in with Latu going out. Quick hit for Metchi. So great after the catch, and he gets belted down to the 40-yard line by Aaron Beasley. How advanced is the vision of Bryce Young and his decision making. He's like a point guard man. He just has unbelievable peripheral vision where he can just see guys without looking at him. Not Mahomes like no one's that level of freakish of nature. <laughs> that guy's unbelievable. Right. But Bryce Young has some of those tendencies and in time those instincts will develop. It'll be a little while till he buys himself a baseball team yeah. like Mahomes <laughs> has in middle America. Quick throw. This is Bolden leaning in the head for the first down against Hatton again. Alabama moving the ball pretty well at will against Tennessee. They're doing a good job. Tennessee so far selling out between the tackles, trying to limit and stymie the run game. Alabama's making their hay on the perimeter by getting guys in space and getting those linebackers for Tennessee running sideline to sideline. Robinson, a little hesitation. So, with that, with Tennessee running sideline to sideline, what's the fix for Tim Banks in Tennessee? It's not easy because when you think about what Alabama forces you to do with their RPOs and some of those other things, you can't really play a lot of zone coverage against them because they're going to take advantage of your eyes being in the backfield. So, the way you neutralize RPOs is by playing more man to man coverage. So when you're in man and you're still running sideline to sideline that can get very tricky because of the misdirection. This is Matthew Butler the senior out of Raleigh who is down. He had a big game against Ole Miss a couple of sacks forced to fumble as well. He would be a big loss for the volunteers. And hopefully he's OK because this defensive line and they've done a great job too but. They are not outrageously deep. So they need to stay healthy as much as anybody in the entire SEC. Yeah, they're thin everywhere. Every Saturday, Marty and McGee at SEC Nation bring you extensive game previews in the SEC. Some guests that you might not find anywhere else. Sometimes they're having fun in a cornfield, evidently. Uh, they'll be in Jacksonville for Georgia and Florida next week. Coverage starts 9 a.m. on SEC Network and the ESPN app. I know there's plenty of cornfields down here, but when I think cornfield, I think Iowa. I don't know. It's probably Field of Dreams. Yeah, I. I you think I, they were up there in Iowa, perhaps? It looked like it. Uh, it Frank Thomas now owns the Field of Dreams. Is so that true? Had, yeah, he just bought it wow. a couple of weeks ago. He bought it from Kevin Costner. He did well from a holding company. I think. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Costner said he'd never sell in the movie, so I'm just a little bit thrown off by that. Greg, we've not worked together a lot, but I have to tell you, don't believe everything you see in the movies. <laughs> Understand. Will Ferrell is not actually an elf. <laughs> Wait, hang on. But he knows Santa. He does. Yes. Second down and nine for Alabama under four to go. Quarter number one. As Butler has come off. 
Empty for Young. Pressure gets there. Young gets wrestled down. That's Byron Young who got into the backfield. A tremendous story out of South Carolina by way of Georgia at its third and long. Just a great game up front. You're going to see movement all throughout. And that was exactly what allowed Young to squeak through. He's one of the impact players. He's one of the few guys on this Tennessee roster that can create his own pass rush. That time, though, didn't create his own. They did the game. He broke free and dropped Young for a loss. It's third and 12 for Alabama. Got to get to the 24-yard line. Young loads it up. Williams had to come back and it's incomplete. The ball was on the ground. Williams didn't make the play. So now fourth down and a decision for Alabama. A tough spot here too because you're looking at a 53 54 yard field goal. Great effort there from Williams as you see the ball just squeak free at the end. Just a little bit off the mark there from Bryce Young and it looked like Williams came just a little bit more inside than Bryce Young anticipated. Job by Tennessee's defense, though, on second and third down, getting Bama behind the sticks and forcing the incompletion. So Reichard for a career long. And this is just for the field goal for Alabama, but as you said, sort of no man's land. Tied at seven. The reason for the field goal try was Byron Young, Katie, a tremendous score. Yeah, Jason, he had offers coming out of high school, but he said he didn't have the grades. So after a quick stint at a prep school that unfolded, Young took a job at Dollar General, where he worked as an assistant manager for 18 months. One day after work, he saw an ad for open tryouts at Georgia Military Academy. He showed up, he wowed at the JUCO tryout, he continued to wow in the 2019 season. His tape, body, speed got him noticed by Tennessee. He says he's now living his dream out at Tennessee, and he hopes his story proves to young people, just bet on yourself. It can change the course of your life. I love that. Absolutely love that story. I mean, just with all of the scouting services and everything out there, you know, he was an assistant manager at Dollar General for a couple of years, and that tryout he found it was off a flyer. I mean, the luck to figure that out and for have the, to have this kid have his talents come out of the SEC, just a fantastic story for Tennessee as a flag comes in on the run from Tyon Evans. Personal foul, top block, offense number 75 and number 58. It's a 15 yard penalty, still second down. We've talked about how thin Tennessee is in a couple of places. Offensive line is certainly one of them. They're without their right tackle, Cade Mays. That was Jerome Carbon on the penalty. Yeah, and this is a difficult spot, too, especially without Cade Mays. Maybe your best pound for pound offensive lineman, him being out and Dane Davis being in the lineup, extremely difficult for Alex Golish. Who has to be very thoughtful with his formation because Alabama with Will Anderson on the edge working against a backup tackle. That's a problem for the balls. And a marker comes down. There's going to be a false start against that offensive line. This crowd knows what it's doing. First door was closed. Hendon Hooker chased by Anderson, who got the first hit, and Christian Harris cleans it up. Nick Saban told us Christian Harris has to play better. That's a start. It most certainly was, and a great job, too, by Will Anderson. As Tennessee way backed up. I think they go conservative here. Yeah, no value in a deep ball. Alabama gets the stop. That was Toll Toll, the linebacker, playing against his former team, the Tennessee Volunteers. He is very well liked on that Tennessee sideline. 